got a scene, yeah? Khan, Shalom, Shalom. Right. So we're the Hebrew Israelites, okay? We're back out here again, prophesying into the wind, okay? Bringing out some truth, but before that, we're gonna start off by saying, Kala halala, Kala halala, Yahweh ha, Yahweh ha, Bahashama, Bahashama, Yahweh shai, Yahweh shai, Wa, Wa, Rawacha, Rawacha, Kodasha, Kodasha, Manuwa, Manuwa. Ah, wanna give double honors to Apostle Taha, all right, and the brothers out there, you know the disciples of Amashi Yaha, Yahweh shai, that are pushing the word in truth and sincerity, okay. And also we want to say Shalawama to the hopeful elect, all right? And Shalawama to the Akayama that are listening to the new wine and taking it in and applying it. Because it's not about just taking the new wine, but it's about applying it to your day-to-day -day life, man. Okay, because this is reality, this is real. The new wine is not a gimmick. You can actually verify what we're saying. All right. Come out, come out, come out. Right. So today we're going to be talking about Esau, man, or the Edomites. Okay. We're going to be revealing who the Edomites are, man. The new wine star. All right. See that? <laughs> That's the spirit, man. That's the spirit, man. You know what I mean? Then come, and, then come. And, yeah, there you go, man. So yeah, like we're saying, man, the new wine is a. Uh, it's spiritual, man. All right. We're not saying what you brothers are doing out there is bullshit. Obviously, you gotta start from somewhere, but this is the re refining process. Okay, this is the refinery. And Yahweh Wahashama Yahweh Shai. You can tell we've even changed the way. We don't say Kal Halal anymore. We say Kala Halala. Okay. Let me let me demonstrate that real quick. Hold that for me, Because look, you're saying. Halal, yeah. but it's meant to be kala halala. Okay. It's meant to be kala. It's, it's like that, that's how you, that's how they say cow, isn't it? I write in Lashawana and I write in English. This is this is how you say cow. They say cow like this, but that's wrong. Because basically, what you're doing is you're using the English way of speaking right. to speak the Lashawana Kodasha and you're not right. supposed to do that That's right. because the thing with the English language is it's a trickery language like for instance if you want to spell night it can mean so many different things yeah. it can be talking about day and night or it can be talking about an actual night you know like yeah, the night yeah, templars night. you know what I'm trying to say or we're getting nighty right so which is which right. it can mean three different things at the same time right. But with the Lashawana Kodasha, it's straightforward, man. Right. That's why you gotta say it as you see it. So instead of saying Ka Halal, you gotta say Kala Halala. Alright? And the same thing applies to Yahawaha. When you say the Most High's name, you don't say Yahawah because when you say Yahawah, it sounds like it's a three lettered word. Huh. You see what I'm trying to say? It's like you're taken away from the majesty of Yahawaha Bahashama Yahawah Sha'ai. Huh. Alright? And if you speak the Lashawana Kodasha the right way, it sounds like you're speaking Patua, man. Right. And that's how we know through the spirit. Yahweh Bahashama Mait, Bahashama Mashiacha, Yahweh Sha'ai. He will have that whole, you know, Jamaican vibration, Patua, because they speak Patua in West Africa as well. And they speak Patua in the Caribbean. The apple don't fall too far from the, from the tree, man. So you gotta go from saying Kal Halal Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Sha'ai to saying Kala Halala Yahweh Ha Bahasham Yahweh Sha'ai. Okay? Because the Lashawana Kodasha, it sounds like you're actually, you're rapping, you're spitting bars. Right. That's how it is. It's, you know, we're, we're a cultural people, man. Wow. You know? So you're trying to use the English language to speak the Lashawana Kodasha, or you're trying to use the American accent to speak the Lashawana Kodasha. It's not gonna work. You're gonna have to go back to that Jeremiah 6 and 16. The old way, which is the good way. Like a child. You know? And most of the words have what? The very first Lashwana Kodasha character, which is Ah. Because every word Ah, Ba, Ga, Da, Ha, Wa, Za, Ka, Ta, Ya, Ka, La, Ma, Na, Sa, I, Pa, Ta, Za, Kwa. 
Rock shot top. You, you see, you keep hearing the ah, ah, ah. You know what I mean? And it's funny because even the gooks when they're talking, you always hear yeah, yeah, yeah. ah inside the, the language, inside, man. Yeah, yeah. Even the, the Arabic as well, there's a lot of ah in the Arabic. That's what I'm trying to say. So the whole, you know, the whole culture of the language is getting changed as well. Because this is Reformation, whether you like it or not. Oh. You know? So yeah, so that would be Kala instead of Kal. See that? So that's Kala. See right, right there, man. Kala, man. Instead of Kal. Kala. Hey, check it for yourself, man. Go on the, on the, on the blue layer of the Bible or something like that. You know? And check it. Man. So oh. it's Kala. Kala halala. Kala, halala, yahawaha, bahashama, yahawashai, baraka ata. Yeah, you gotta say it as you see it, man. Because this ain't a game, this is real. This is serious. And soon, like we've been saying, a lot of you guys are gonna get the koboko, man. Because that's the only way you guys gonna learn. You understand? Because that koboko, it goes back to what? The lamada. Lamada. Lamada is the gold that the shepherd uses to guide the sheep, man. Oh, that's right. All right. And also, the Lashawana Kodasha is not a prideful language. You say it as you see it. Oh. All right. And also, the name Yahawaha is a powerful name. So you gotta say it, man, as you see it. Yeah. Ha. Huh? Wa. Ha. Huh. Oh, that's 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 Yahawaha, isn't it? So yeah. Uh, wah, huh. I don't know where the whole silent thing came from because yeah, yeah, the scripture weird. says keep not silent. Man. It's weird. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Where, where did the whole silent hush, hush, hush? You know? Hush, that's a, hush, that's a more hush, European hush, way of doing things, man. Right? They got the hush, hush spirit on them, innit? Yeah, uh, that's why you guys see some wicked shit and you don't say nothing. Yeah, true. That's that hush, hush demon. That's and when the scripture, rude. when you get Leviticus chapter 5, verse 1, Leviticus yeah. chapter 5 is a cut to that silent garbage that you guys are pushing out there. It's some bullshit, man. You know? It's some bull crap. It's some bull. It's an uncertain way of saying the Heavenly Father's name. But you said 5 and 1. Yeah, Leviticus 5 and 1. That whole silent, silent thing is, is madness. I can read it or you can read That's not how we do it. I really I really yeah. chapter 5, verse 1. No, no. And if I saw sin, I'd hear the verse of swearing. Right, and also not saying the name Yahawaha, it's a trespass. Because uh, Exodus 20 and 7, it says, Well, he shall not hold you guiltless and take of his name in vain. Uh, right? And this is mainly for you brothers out there that claim to be men of the Lord that wear the earpods, you know. We're not talking to the regular peons out here. Because these guys ain't really part of the movie, they're just extras. You know when you watch a film and you see the guy that's walking down the street with his dog? He's not part of the movie, man, he's just an extra. We're talking about you guys that claim to be the main event. The speakers of the Ashwana Badasha, because every time you meet a brother you say Shalom. So we're correcting you because in Shah season, when you meet us and you say Shalom, you might get a backhand from us. Because uh, we're going to be like, huh? Yeah. What does that mean? Are you trying to say Shalom? And if you come to us and say Yahawah, we're going to slap you as well because you're taking the Most High's name in vain. That's what it's going to come to, man. Okay? It's going to get to that Nehemiah 13. We're going to start beating niggas up on the street, man. And we're going to drag you all the way down the road, man, in front of everybody. Because Yahweh Haba Hashemah, Yahweh Sha'ai is going to give us the power and authority to do that. Alright? Not to say physically we can't take you on now, but everything we do here is in decency and in order. Because there's going to come a point where we're going to start punching you guys up, man. That's the, the ones of you who are elect, who are meant to be part of that 144. You're going to get structured in military uh, formation. And when you go to the military, you get beat down, man. Okay, that's what they do, right? They break you down, then they shape you up into a soldier. That's how you're going to get it. So we're showing, we're taking the time out now to show you how things are meant to be done by way of the YouTube. But soon it's going to be in person and you're not going to like it, man. 
Because right now, Yahweh has teaching you from a distance, but soon it's going to get personal. It's going to be close contact. All right? And you're not going to enjoy that if you be stubborn to this new wine. All right? Crossing T's and dotting I's. There's nothing wrong with that. Crossing T's and dotting I's. Because if you don't dot an I, it can be mistaken for a one. Uh. If you don't cross a T, it can be mistaken for an L. Uh. That's what we're doing. Uh. You know, that's why the brother, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Haba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, he said, What? We're bringing clarity. Uh, and that's what we're doing. We're bringing clarity, man. All right? So read that. Malaka. This is Leviticus chapter 5, verse 1. And if a soul sin and hear the voice of swearing and is a witness, whether he have seen or known of it, if you do not utter it, if you do not what? If you, if do, you do not, not utter, utter it, it, right? Then he shall bear his iniquity. There you go. So you have to speak out, man. That hush hush madness, that's the Babylonian culture. We are the Hebrew Israelites, man. That's right. Alright? And the Hebrew Israelites ruled England. Henry VIII was a Hebrew Israelite from the tribe of Yawada. Okay? He was from the tribe of uh, Salaka, Yawadaha. Yeah, that's the tribe he was from. He was from the tribe of Yawadaha. Okay? Because when you look at the Dalafa, Dalafa, which is the, uh, the two triangles that make up the, the shield of the water, it goes back to the, the what? The house of two doors, man. Dalafa, Dalafa. Why do you think he had um, so many women? Okay? And why do you think he's the most famous king England has ever had? Because that was King David and Apostle Peter reincarnated. That's why he came with the Reformation, man. It all makes sense, okay? But it's just that brothers are refusing to adhere to it. But it's fine. Because back when he came with the Reformation, you we had niggas like you that was coming up against him but it all came to nothing in the end because it prevailed he's the reason why you niggas even got bibles today okay he made it easily accessible man he trans his, his his grandson now came and translated it so that you could now be able to read it so he, he kind of did a lot man because back then the roman catholic church which was run by levi you know they had you know the whole thing on lock. But he actually broke it down and through the spirit they go back to the Sanhedrin. Because back in Yahweh Sha'i's time, the Sanhedrin had the doctrine on lock. You couldn't go and teach what you wanted because the Sanhedrin yeah, guys, they, yeah, they would have came sure and got your ass. They, they called it uh, heresy. Exactly. And even in the dark ages, they used to keep people for heresy. Man. They will burn you. They will burn you alive, man. They will burn you, man. They used to do a lot of mad shit, man. Or you get quartered. Yeah. They quarter you, man. Yeah. But now, People Everyone say, is just talking when everyone's just doing what they want. Hey, nothing happens to them. Hey, back in time you will get murked for that. Hey, you're gonna get murked eventually. You get murked for that. You're gonna get murked eventually, but this time it's gonna be worse. Okay? It's gonna be worse, man, because what? The most high is giving you a grace period. Yeah, we look like performing clowns right now, but you're not gonna be laughing when we're standing face to face. That's right. You're not gonna be, you're not gonna be laughing, man. It's not gonna be nice. But anyway. Let's get to the lesson now. So, yeah, that was just a little intro right there. So today we're going to be talking about Esau, man, because, you know, Esau's the get um, second edge of six and nine. Esau's the end of the world, which really we're in the end of the world, man. You know? And a lot of people may not admit it, but they know we're at the end of the world. They know, man. So we're just here to prophesy, what, the final, Finale. Ah, finale. We're finale. here to, to, to bring out the finale before the Shah season kicks in. Alright? All right? Because as as Esau goes, it's like a you know when you see on a seesaw, one must go up and one must right, go right, down. Right, right, right. So as Esau is going down, Jacob is rising up like that. You know, it's going this way, like that. And then when Esau goes down, Jacob goes up. Right. When Jacob goes down, Esau goes up. That's, right. That's how it is, man. It cannot be two. You know? Gotta be one. And all the other nations are um, what you call the pivot. They're in the middle. You know, they're in the middle, man. <laughs> Esau is on that side, and Jacob is on that side. 
and, and Esau and Esau, yeah. exactly. And Esau is going down, but as Esau is going down, he's going to be throwing darts at you. That's where we come in, man. You know what I'm saying? That's where we come in because we're trying to help the brothers survive what's coming. Because hey, it says wisdom and understanding shall be the stability of that time. And one thing about Edomites, they don't play with information. Man. Yeah, they don't play they with take that. information very seriously. That's why they invest a lot of money into the media. Because they want to control the output of information. That's why even a lot of our videos, they get censored, they get shut down. Or shadow banned. They get shadow banned, you know. Because they don't want you guys to know what's going on, which is okay. Because there's too many minions out there anyway. So through the spirit, they're doing us a favor, man. Because this is a small severed assembly. Uh, you understand? It's a small severed assembly. Alright? Yeah, bring it up. This is 2nd Ezra. Chapter 6, verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world. For what? For Esau is the end of the world. For what? For Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of and Jacob is the beginning of it that following. Right, so when Esau go down, that's when Jacob is going to rise up. That's right. Okay, and in order for Jacob to rise up, Esau has to be on his way down. Because I gave you an analogy of a seesaw, man. Both can't be at the top at the same time. One has to go down for the other to come up. That's how it goes, like that. You understand? So... So yeah, so we gonna get straight into this, man. All right, this is new wine breakdown. Uh, Esau slash the Edomites. Right, so concerning Edom, we must first break down the name Adawama, okay? Which goes back to Adam. Because when you look up Esau's name, Adawama, it goes back to Adam. Let me write that on the board. The only difference is, uh, hold that for me, Malaka. Yeah. The, the, the only difference is that there's a wa in Esau, okay, or Edom, there's a wa, but in Adam there's no wa, and wa is just a connector, because the output, the for those of you brothers that don't know what the wa symbol looks like, it's basically a hook, or a tempeg, it looks like that, show it that's the wa symbol, alright, so now, at the wa ma, we walk, ah, and then Ma and then Adam so this one will be Adam and Ma and then Adam will be uh, uh, Ma so the only difference between these two words is the Wa because Wa is basically connecting the Ada with the Ma. Interconnector. It's just an internet interconnector, so it's pretty much the same word, man. See that? It's the same thing. It's just that Esau has the mark of the beast in his name, uh, which is the temp peg. Uh, because really the peg goes back to the mark of the beast. Right. The mark of the the beast, the wa, which is the hook. The brother made a breakdown about it. Hey, if you don't watch the video, that's on you, innit? Uh, you know? Uh, so that will be Adam, okay. So now, yeah, they seen that one, didn't they? Can't. Right. So let's get back to. Right. So when you see Edom and Adam, Adawama or Adama, we go on. We gonna give you the understanding as to why it's the same word, okay? All right. So it goes back to Adam. So get Genesis 25 and 30. Genesis 25 and 30. Genesis chapter 25 verse 30, Edom. We're going to show you something about that name, Edom, as well. Because remember, Adam was taken from the ground, alright? So Adama, Adama means what? Taken from the ground. But then again, when you go to West Africa, okay, or even let's say East Africa, because that's where life began. Right. When you go to East Africa, the dust of the ground is what? Red. red uh, it's red, man. For those of you that have been to the continent, 
every time you go out, you walk around with your slippers. Would you notice when you come back to the yard? You got like a red thing on the soles of your feet, man. So it's right there, you know, irrefutable. <laughs> you know, this is practical knowledge. We're not just spewing madness. It's practical knowledge that you can verify for yourself. So yeah, so show them the depth. So read out the outline of the using for Edom. So get Genesis 25 and 30 and go to the interlinear for Edom. And uh, yeah, let's get some understanding of who Edom is, man. Right? Genesis chapter 25 verse 30 right and Esau said to Jacob feed me I pray thee with that same red pottage right for I am faint right therefore was his name called Edom there you go because that pottage that he fed him with he goes back to the red red that he was talking about that red red dish it's a West African dish man Lentils, or what they call it's a legume. Beans, plantain with the gary and the red oil. Okay, so he, he must have fed him some beans, man, with some red oil. I'm sure there was some oil in there, man. So boiled beans with some red oil. That's the red bread right there. All right. So yeah. Uh, so get Edom. So red. Mm. So it means red. Red. Mm. Now read the definition C. That one. Yeah. So so it says so, so it says Edom means red. Okay. And Edom in the Lashawana Kodasha as well. Adamama. And Adamama goes back to Adama, which is Adam. Because Adam was taken from the ground which is red. Right. And that shows you that Adam was living in, in on the continent. Man. Definitely. You know? Definitely. He was living on the continent. Alright. He had to have been there because they say well Africa is the cradle of civilization. So how the hell is it starting in Iraq? Right. Something's not adding Something up there. Not added, oh, yeah. That's why the most I put a spirit on us to bring clarity, man. By way of the Rawaka Kodasha. Right? By way of the Rawaha Kodasha. So yeah, read that definition C as well. So because one thing brothers keep forgetting is that the Edomites are in Africa as well. They think the Edomites are just in Europe or Australia or America. No. Edomites are in Africa, man. The land flowing with milk and honey. You damn sure they gonna have their hands stuck in that cookie jar. Because they think um, after the Berlin conference, when they split up, they just took what they could and they left. No, they stayed there, man. No, they stayed there, man. There's a village in South Africa, it's only Edomite there, man. <laughs> a village full of things. There's yeah. only Edomite there, man. Like, it's unbelievable. There is no secure access to enter this rural South African town, similar to so many others. But very quickly, the uniqueness of Orania is obvious. Here, everyone is white. Nestled in the Karoo, a semi-desert area lost in the middle of the country, its population of 2,500 Afrikaners are descendants of Dutch and French Huguenot. And that's spiritual, man. We're going we to give you the understanding as to why they're in the southern part of Africa. That's all synonymous with the, with the breakdown that we're bringing out. So read definition C for Edom. And it's funny because this is the only time I've seen that in You know by Iran, isn't it? It's true. And he's got the red on him. <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm just, the most You can't make this up, man. The most the most the the you can't make this up, man. That's what I'm trying to say. It's spiritual, spiritual. man. Spiritual. This whole thing is this this whole thing is, is spiritual. Come to say it. This whole thing is spiritual, man. You understand? We can't make this up, man. Quick, uh, man. Just show that word, man. Because we've never had it like this yeah, before. Yeah, can't, can't. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the yeah. spirit right there, man. It's true though. That's spiritual, man. When you think about it, it's real. That's spiritual, it's spiritual, bro. You know? <laughs> Can. So for those of you that say we're bugged out with this. The spirit is know. in the midst. It's all good, man. Uh, you know, Yahawaha. 
Waya Hawa Sha'ai, Rata Zawanaka. We're going to get you guys, man. That's right. You know? Yeah, man. And if you're elect, we're going to give you a good savage beating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pat it's you biblical, down. It's biblical, it's biblical. We're going to pat you down and you're going to get back information. Yeah, it's biblical. But if you ain't elect, you know what we're going to do to you, man? We're going to spin you. Look up that word. We're going to spin you. Because a lot of you guys you think we're pushovers, where, you know, that brother, Yaramia, he, he used to call me Fireman Sam. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's taking a piss. Yeah, it's all good, man. He, he, there, he, said that, he said that about five years ago, but he thought I forgot. You're going to tell me, Fireman Sam, when I see you, bro. And that's how it's going to be. That's the, that's the energy we're coming with now. That's the energy the Bayatha, the Wada is coming with. We're coming with that same energy that you guys have been giving us for years, man. We're going to match you, but we're going to take it to another level. That's how we're going to do it. That's right. Okay. And, and Mark, they're not speaking about oh, forgiveness for the. Well, you can't keep on poking the bear and talking about forgiveness. Why can't you change your ways first? You're going to be trying to destroy me every time and say that every time when I react, say, like, oh, you got to forgive. That's very childish, man. The most I require the past. So the time comes, you're going to be answering when the counseling is, 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 is set up. And you answer to, you, you answer to everything that you did to certain brothers. That's just how it is. But even Yahusha, I said that. He said, yeah. you're going to be guilty of the counseling. They think, we're, jo they think we're joking. It's a game. You know? And like he speaks of an inquisition. Inquisition. Well, look at that word. Inquisition, man. And I know every time in the dark ages, they brought an inquisition. People were getting burned and chopped up. Their head getting chopped yeah. up. It's not a joke, man. But the most has a terrible power. We all know that. They're going to get caught. A matter of time, you know. We're bearing, we're bearing the foolishness of you brothers just enough for the shah season. And then, like my man Kaala said, in shah season, all, all the bullshit is gonna end instantly. Man. Wow. It's not gonna be uh, you standing in front of a camera or making no, no. It's not gonna be like that. You're gonna get structure. South, south what? Land of south and south east. Did you hear that? South. So that means the Edomites are going to be in the south right. of Palestine. Right. When they say Palestine here, obviously they add it up. But we all know what it's talking about. The land yeah, but let's just focus on it's the cold. The most has said these motherfuckers are going to be in the south. So when we look at the map, we're looking at south. Now, which country? Is the southernmost on the world map. South Africa, no. It's so there for a reason. Nah. Because when the sun rises from the east, it goes to the south. So when Yahweh Sha'ai comes back, he's gonna come from the east. He's going to what? To the south. Nah. That's right. That's without a shadow of a doubt because when the sun rises from the east, it doesn't go to the west, it goes to the south. Uh, and then from the south, it will sit, it will sit at the west. Uh, so it moves and, and you know, it has a way that it moves. And through the spirit, we know how much Yahya, how much I go move like that. Okay, that's all metaphorically speaking, but it's going to be literal. So Yahweh through the spirit, put them right there in the south man and it's all spiritual but anyway we're going to continue so so Edom and get Genesis uh, 2 and 19 for Adam 
because we've got to show them Adam as well. So Genesis chapter 2, verse 19, Adam. Okay. This is Genesis chapter 2, verse 19, Adam. And out of the ground, the Lord Jehovah formed every beast of the field and uh, every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam. Unto who? And brought them unto Adam. Right, so Adam. So look up the etymology, the definition for Adam. Adama, Adama. And it's funny, there's a, a footballer called Adam, Adama, Adama Traore. And in West Africa, they say Adama. Adama. There's a lot of people called Adama in West Africa. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the right? <laughs> you know, one of the, one of the fastest footballers in the world. Adama Traore. Oh, Adama Traore. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Adama, man. And he could be from the tribe of Natalie, you know. Big, muscly guy, but he's fast, man. Footballer. He used to play for, I don't know if he's still there. I think he went to Barcelona. He used to play for Wolverhampton, man. You know. Pace was like 97. He's gone, man. That's what I'm trying to say. So, hey, so who are the Hebrews, man? Exactly. <laughs> who are the Hebrews? You know, because Adam is Adama. Adama, and there's so many people, you know, from the Sahelian region to the Maghreb called Adama. Hmm? Hey. Yeah, what's so what's the definition for Adam? What, what, what's the outline? Okay, so the outline biblical use, the outline of biblical usage for Adam, one man or mankind, a man. B, B, man, mankind, much more frequently. C, Adam, first man. D, city of Islamia. D, city in Jordan Valley. There you go. So, so Adam, Adama. Right, so let's carry on, let's carry on. The fact that Edom and Adam means the same or has the same definition back to the very beginnings of time in the book of Genesis chapter 4 verse 1 okay Cain is the first killer so get Genesis chapter 4 verse 1 because one thing I've realized is that after the flood Cain came back as Esau that's right right because we've all been regenerated you know like when you buy a can of coke from the shop and it says recycle that's how all the spirits have been recycled. Uh, Nothing can escape the earth. Everything is contained in the earth. Everything gets recycled. And that that is the um, that's the uniqueness of the creation of Yahweh Habashama Yahweh Shai. Okay? He created everything to last forever. It's meant to be infinite. So everything can be recycled, man. Just like the gold, diamond, silver, the spirits get recycled too. So King that's what we're trying to show. That's right, you got that? Yeah, so bring that out. Genesis 4 verse 1, man. Right. Genesis chapter 4 verse 1. And Adama knew Eve, and, like a, knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain. And bare who? And bare Cain. And bare who? And bare Cain. Right, so she bare Cain. So Cain was the first son of Adam. Okay? Cain was the first son of Adam. The same way Esau was the first son of who? Isaac. Isaac, man. That's spiritual, bro. You see that? So he had to come back as the first son again. That's why he moves the way he does. He always wants to know what you're doing. You know, he wants to know how many animals are in the world. He's trying to chip all the animals. He goes to the bottom of the ocean. He, he's a proud man, man. Adam, he's got that first son uh, demon on him. Yeah. It feels like everything is ready. You know? Yeah, because as the first son, there's a way you carry yourself if you're the first son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know, I know that one. That's why Yahweh I said, what? The first shall be last, last, and the last shall be first. He's talking about Esau, man. Because Esau feels like he's the main event, he's the main guy. That's why he killed Abel, because right. he felt like, yo, you just came yesterday. I'm trying to. And, you know, you're trying to take away my shine from the most high. Yeah, that's what he jealous of. You know what I mean? And really, they're jealous of us, man. You know? 
deep down inside, the eat of my son, Genesis of us. They are. That's true. That's true. Genesis of us. It's sad that some of our people as well, being Babylonized, take on that spirit as well, being jealous of the next man. That's, that's the Esau spirit. That's, that's, that's the Esau spirit. Yeah, that's yeah, the they're jealous of us, man. You know? <laughs> and that, that jealousy goes back to Esau. So like the, bro like the bro brother said, all of you guys out there that are jealous, you got a whole more demon on you, man. Because you know? you're, you're, you're sleeping with the same women that Esau sleeps with, so you're getting the same demons that's on Esau. Because a lot of you sleep with pass around type women, you know. How many of you have had virgins? <laughs> La aha. So you're sleeping with, so you sleep with a girl that slept with an Edomite. You're sleeping with the Edomite. So the demons on the Edomite is coming on you. Okay. Because women are like a uniform. When you wear it, it takes on your spirit. That's what they are. They take your spirit on. So a woman that slept with 10 Edomites, she got 10 different legion Edomitish spirits on her. And then you go, you're like, yeah, I need to get busy. You pop it, those demons come on you, you know? And then when brothers interact with you, they're acting like a damn retard, you know? That's why through the spirit and power of Yahweh, of Hashem, Yahweh Sha'ai, we're going to vocalize all the demons out of you because that whip, is very spiritual, it's man. Necessary, man. Because once you once you strike, once you give them the full strikes, the demon will flee, man. Because the demons don't like to be uncomfortable, you know. That's why a lot of these Edomites they smoke to calm themselves because the demons in them they need that that calmness so they can continue to inhabit the vessel. That's why when you fast, the demons run away. They don't they don't want you to be in a starving body, in an afflicted body. They run away, man. That's why that kawoko is very, very important. That's what Yahweh Sha'ai did in the temple. He whipped them because he was trying to get rid of that selling demon that they had. The merchandising demon. And it's funny, Nehemiah did the same thing as well. So hey, the proof is in the pudding. A lot of brothers need an ass whooping. Yeah, they need it, man. And you're going to get it by Yatha the water stuff. That's right. Yeah. That's what the Bayatha the water represents. Giving niggas an ass whooping that they've been due for a long time. Because a lot of you guys never been chastised before. Like that you're on your guy. You know? I don't think he's ever been, he's ever got a good ass whooping before. He hasn't. That's why he talks the way he does. Because when you meet a brother, there's a way he conducts it so you can tell now nah, that guy he's disciplined. Even though he doesn't like you, there's certain things he won't say. But that guy, he's just reckless. Da, 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 da. So you gonna get a nail through your mouth, bro. You know, the only um, hope he has now is if he's one of the elect, and then Yahweh Shai will be like, okay, allow him. But even still, we're going, we, you know, we're going to do something to you just to make you know because we need to establish that fear oh, and that discipline. Well, like, it's funny enough. When I speak, they forget to say, oh, I will never be around them. But me personally, I had, I had two dreams where I saw the same brother talking about around us. So it's something you won't be able to escape. You never know. That's why you gotta be careful how you speak, because you never know how things gonna turn out to go. See? And it's funny because when we started the camp, he didn't even want to come. He was playing silly games. He'll come when he likes. Oh, I need to go to uni. Now he's the he's the greatest teacher ever alive. Who encouraged that that little nigga to come to camp? It was me, man. Now he thinks he's the man now. He's, he's talking, calling me out of my name. But you know, it's all good, man. I'll catch you guys later. Let's, let's get back to this, man. Because all of you guys, you're going to see me, man. You're going to see me. Look at all these camps that came out of the church of Yahweh But they still can't see you guys, man. Uh, you know, so Gen Genesis chapter, so we've got Cain the killer. Just like Esau, who became the progenitor of the Edomites, Cain was the first son of Adam. Also, Adam was taken from the ground, which happens to be reddish in color. Hence Esau, so you might have put that in the video. Right, hence Esau, who is the reincarnation of Cain, called Edom, which also means red. You see that? Another similarity can be made in regards to the offering that Cain made to Yahweh. 
being similar to the food that Aikwaba offered to Aishawa for his birthright. For those of you that don't know, I, it's not Yaikwab, it's Yaikwaba. And it's not Aishaw, it's Aishawa. Okay? We've got to start saying these Lashawana Kodasha words the right way. Because there's going to come a time when you talk out of turn, you're going to get whacked on your mouth. You're going to get whacked on your mouth, man. Alright? Uh, okay. So, it's funny because the same lintels that he gave him to take his birthright is, is pretty much kind of similar to what Cain offered as a, a burnt offering to the most high. It says the fruit of the ground, didn't it? There you go. That's pretty, so that's showing you the same guy. Because everyone has been recycled to come and do the same thing. Yes. So the question is to be asking itself is who are we? Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because if, every, if everyone has been recycled to do, to do the same thing, then who are we? We find, that we find ourselves doing the reformation you exactly know? and so, some of so, that don't like it but that's the reformation right there so who are we it's crazy, then? who are we you know it's crazy who are we so you have to think about who, who, who did the reformation they go find out they go find out it's going to be a harsh lesson you know i think yahweh wants it to be a harsh lesson because a lot of you are disrespectful you need to get you need to get up man and you're going to get got you're going to get a, a savage i'm putting this on record you brothers out there that are disrespectful, whether you're elect or whether you're one for four, whether you're an apostle, you're gonna get a savage beating from the Bayat Lada Wada. That's gonna be your induction. You know like how the creeps are they induct you, they give you a good beating. That's spiritual, you know. Before you become a creep, they give you a savage beating, man. But the savage yeah, but the savage beating you're gonna get is you, you, it's gonna be well deserved. That's how we're going to let you into the Bayer Father Water because in Shah season, the Bayer Father Water is going to be there. And all of you niggas are going to be running to us. To the spirit of power of Yahweh, Abba, Shama, Yahweh, Shah, you're going to be coming to us. But the savage beating is going to be waiting for you. We, we, like we said, we're going, to whoop, we're going to give you a good ass whooping and then we're going to let you back in. It's not going to be a nice whoop. We're going to beat your ass, bro. Because everyone needs to understand this. You can't be coming around the by a father while and just you just be disrespectful, talking out of turn. You think this is, you know, the most high is gonna change the dynamics of things. You're dealing with terrible men out here, man. You know? The most high made us lowly so we can teach you. So you're talking shit. So there's gonna come a time where you're gonna turn into the lions, honey badger, wolf. And that's when you're going to see what this thing is really about. And also, another thing as well, we're not here to be liked. I keep saying that. We're not here to be liked, man. We're here to teach you the right way. Okay? Apostle Taha, uh, Apostle Tahara, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Haba Hashemah Yahweh Sha'ai, has done all he can do, man. That's why we salute him. Okay? And soon, the most high gonna give him rest. We gonna take the mantle, and that's when you guys are gonna see that this was this this, this whole thing, okay, was not a cake ride, man. Because everyone's just doing whatever the hell they wanna do. Yeah, now. there's no order. There's no order. Everyone's there's doing no what order. they want. Everyone man. get up, do what they wanna do. It's smart, man. It's smart. So yeah. Uh, so where we at? Where we at? Right. So right. So gonna... so Genesis chapter four verse three. It shows you that um, Cain brought the fruit of the ground. So get Genesis chapter 4 verse 3, the fruit of the ground. That's the offering that he came and gave to Yahweh. The most high don't like vegetables. He wants blood and flesh. That's what he wants. So, for, <laughs> so basically the most high is not a vegan. He's not, he's, not, he's not a vegan. The herbs and that he likes it. When it comes to the offerings, the Most High requires blood, okay? Blood and a body, meat. All right, and it shows you how he's stepping. Okay, Roots. Most High is not a vegan, man. So Genesis chapter four, verse three. 
So this is Genesis chapter 4, verse 3. Bring it up. And in the and in process of time, right, it came to pass that came of the fruit of the ground. Of the what? Of, of the, the fruit, fruit of, of the, the ground. ground. An offering unto the Lord. Right. Who brings the fruit of the ground as an offering to the Lord? That is madness, bro. That is that is foolishness, bro. You see what I'm trying to say? And that's why through the spirit. When you read about Job, it says, through the bushes they break. They were living in the bushes, you know, right, right. eating vegetables and all that. You see, that was the most high showing him who the was, oh, man. You see what I'm trying to say? That was the most high trying to show you who Cain is, man. You know? They were eating junipers. Wait, is it Job 30 and 8? It's 30 and 8. There you go, man. Yeah, so that shows you that Esau was Cain. You know? That's more proof. Right, so now, okay, where we at? So the fruit of the ground. So Genesis 25 and 34 as well talks about the red pottage. No need to get there. Of the lentils, which is also reddish, which is also a reddish dish of the fruit of the ground. So technically speaking, Esau sold his birthright for the exact same thing he offered as an unacceptable offering unto the Lord Yahweh. We must also consider that the name Cain <coughs> means possession. Okay? So get Cain, the definition for Cain means possession. So we're gonna break down why Cain means possession. Cain. Comes up. So Cain means possession, man. Right? And that's spiritual within itself. Because there's only one nation of people that have tried to possess every other. Indian, they, they want to be African, they, they want to be Native American, they want to be Australian, they want to be uh, 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 a lot of people that live in the East, Eskimos, 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 yeah. Eskimos yeah. you know, they want to be everything other than an Edomite. Oh, I'm so sorry, is that what you're No, 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 because so my, sorry. my, my like so yeah, stand, so that's it man, so possession bro, you they go possess your heritage. Okay. And also okay. through the spirit, that's why they like to put everything sure. in captivity. Uh, you see how they cage the animals in the zoo, you know, there's bad yeah, spirit. spirit. They create borders, possession. they like to cage, basically. They got the mind of a German. They like to put oh, well, got things you. in the cage. That's fine. They'll seed you, they'll trap That's you, it. man. That's the spirit of Cain. Uh, so bring that out. Bring Cain out. So the other biblical usage of Cain. No, no. Cain equals possession. Possession. Right, so possession. And what's the other definition when you go into the root word etymology? Because notice it says possession. Alright? They possess every nation, bro. Even the 12 tribes, man. Alright? And through the Spirit, the Most High said we're going to possess them. That's right. So that shows you that Cain is. Uh, shows you that Cain was Esau. Uh, yeah, man. Go on, read that. That biblical usage for Cain one equals spear. 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 A spear, man, for hunting deers and also for going to war. Okay? And also, it can go back to the nuclear missiles as well because the nuclear missile looks like a spear or an arrow. You know what I mean? That's the modern day spear or arrow, man. So that, hey, who has the nukes, man? Esau, yeah. Esau, man. So that shows you who Cain is, bro. <laughs> and also it shows, the fact that it means spear, he was a hunter as well. Right. He's a, he likes to hunt, he likes to hunt shit down. You know? Well, when you go to Africa in the safari, what do you see there? There will be yeah. thousands and thousands to go and hunt, man. Exactly, killing all the lions. 
man of the field, isn't it? Yeah. He's even got programs where he shows how he hunts and stuff. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like how to be a good hunter. <laughs> So, uh, also, Adam was taken from the ground, which happens to be reddish. Okay, we read that one. Uh, right, where are we? Where are we? So, technically speaking, Esau sold his birthright for the exact same thing he offers. Uh, uh, right. So, Cain needs possession which can be a cross-reference to various precepts further proven he is Esau. Uh, so let's get Numbers 24 and 18, right? Numbers 24 and 18 concerning Cain, because remember, Cain needs possession. That was a lovely thing, I've never seen that many people here. Through the Spirit, the most high brought them to come in here, their judgment, uh, innit? Uh, just uh, in it, like. They just sit down, man. They come out of nowhere. He's a cunning hunter, isn't he? Yeah, man. Hey, listen, man. The power of Yahweh like, is here. Okay? The power is here, man. And to the spirit, Jake is not the name of Hakan unto us until, until when we're rolling over. Which is fine. You know, we'll get you eventually. And also, when they see us, they already gonna know what's coming. They're going to know. Oh, Plenty of time to prepare their, their minds for it, though. That's how most of do it. Yeah, time, man. Give you time to give you, give you a sign, sign innit? Yeah. You show you, you guys are praying for a sign. This is the sign. This is the sign. So yeah, so you got that numbers 24 and 18. Yeah. Let's get that, man. What does it say about Esau, man? So that, that numbers. Was king. Chapter 24, verse 18. Dada. And Edom shall be a possession and what and, and Edom, Edom shall, shall be a possession. possession and what and, and Edom, Edom shall be a possession. possession did you hear that Edom shall be a possession and what does Cain mean Spirit. Cain mean possession Cain as well. means possession man uh, let, me, let me have a hear that So yeah, so Cain means possession. Right. And it says Edom shall be a possession. Right. Come on, bro. So Esau gonna be a Nike trainers in the cupboard, yeah. man. That's right. You know? We're gonna have them, man. We're gonna possess them. Esau gonna be a pop Ferrari in the garage. That's right. To ride and abuse and rev as many times as possible. Right. Until the wheels fall off, man. Right. We're gonna ride that. And it's funny because in the dark ages we had them in. It's just that, you know that prophecy that said, uh, and it shall come, thou shalt serve thy brother Jacob. Right, and right, it, and right, right, right. Thou shalt right. break his yoke from off thy neck. That's, That's what happened, Genesis man. 27. They got free, innit? The most high freed them for a little season. But we're going to catch them again. Yahweh Ratas Awanaka. But this time, they're going to be exterminated forever. Okay? They did too much dirt. They gotta go. Yeah, they did too much, man. So after we. Uh, after we rid, <laughs> after we rid our chests of all the abuse, because what we go and do is when when the, when Yahweh Haba Hashama Yahweh Shai delivers them into our hands, we're gonna just gather them all together, and we're just gonna reminisce on all the bad times we've had. Even standing here is grievous, man. We're gonna reminisce on how we had to put up with their bullshit and all that, and we're just gonna take out all our frustration on them. Okay. And then after we've uh, we've exercised enough frustration, you know, we just go and gather them together, maybe in one small island, fly a chariot over and just shoot a laser beam at it and just blow it up, man. And that will be that, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That will be the end of Esau. You know, and funnily enough, what Esau can also mean what wasted away is he. So he's the only nation that the Most High created to destroy at the end. Because every other thing is infinite, keeps coming back, keeps coming back. But Esau is a what? Is a non-renewable resource. Basically, he's gonna be destroyed forever. Waste. That's why the script is a waste. 
There you go. So, uh, where we at? Where we at? So, Edom shall be a possession. So now get Amos chapter 9 verse 12 because Amos chapter 9 verse 12 further points towards them being Cain as well because Cain means possession. Oh. Amos chapter 9 verse 12 will also show you you know, that, that that's the correlation that you can make to point towards who they are today. That's so, true. we're basically revealing who they are, man. Through the Raul Kafa. That's a new wine style. This is Amos right? 9 and 12, yeah? Yeah, so read it. Amos chapter 9, verse 12. This is Amos chapter 9, verse 12. Bring that up. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. That they may what? That, that they, they may possess, possess the remnant of Edom. Edom. And of all the heathen which are called by my name. Did you hear that? Possess the remnant of Edom. Possession again. So Esau is our property, man. You know? But they slipped out of our hands. Uh, uh, so now the Most High is going to give us the claws and the shark so we can what? We can catch them again. Uh, you know? And that goes back to when I was saying hunting season is coming. They uh, thought I was joking, man. Uh, I said we was lying in wait. Now he's raised up the heads. We know who the brothers are. The heads. That's right. And the next thing is what? Shark, which is the hunting season I was talking about. Because I know brothers are talking rubbish, saying, oh, he's making it up as he's going along. We're going to see whether I was making it up as, as I was going along. Uh, Say if the Lord that doeth this. Say if the Lord that doeth this. Right. So, also, a further look into the name Cain goes back to the meaning spear, which can be deciphered as a hunter or man of the field, just like Esau. Genesis chapter 25 verse 27, get that? Because remember, it says Cain means spear. So that goes back to hunting uh, or, or warfare, uh, you know? Because Esau is a warring, he's a warring guy, he likes fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a warlike spirit. He's a warlike spirit, he just, he just loves to fight, man, you know? And they do it subtly as well. Right, oh yeah, yeah. Because they'll talk about peace, but then they'll be fighting you at the same time. Yeah. So Esau will be like peace, but he's starting <laughs> He's a, he's a psychotic killer, isn't he? He's a psychotic killer, man. He's like that movie, American Psycho. If you guys he's a psycho, bro. You know, you know? He, he went to Libya and said, oh, we're trying to get rid of Gaddafi to bring about democracy. He just go there and he destroy the whole country, bro. Everywhere he goes, desolate, desolate. That's why now, through the spirit, the Midianites are kicking him out. Yeah, They're like, now nah, we've had enough, man, get out. And the Midianites are in the Sahel region of Africa, man. All right? The brother already done the breakdown. And we ain't seen a single camp showing us the prophecy pertaining to how all those Francophone countries are getting rid of Esau from their land. There's no breakdown for that. Because you got the breakdown wrong about the state of Israel being the land. That's why you can't find a breakdown. And this ain't about who's got the biggest camp or who has the most precepts. This is about facts. There's no breakdown for that. So you need to admit that you made a mistake when it came to who the nations are today. And then you're going to have to humble down that see if you have any kind of decency about you as a man of the Lord and go and watch the, the priest Yahazakwala's videos, man, about the breakdowns of who the different nations are. Because we showed you who the Assyrians are. We showed you who the Persians and the Medes are. We showed you who the 12 tribes are. Right. And, we sh and now we're showing you who the Edomites are. So you have no excuse, man, because everything is on the table now. So now are you going to prophesy the truth or are you going to carry on just regurgitating unverified doctrine? That's the real question because now you're being tried through the Rawaka Kodasha, man. Mm. All right? Yeah, right? You're being yeah. tried, man. Because yeah. even with the name thing, Yahweh, I'll put the spirit on us to come out and say, stop saying his name wrong because soon he's going to start visiting brothers, man. And it's not going to be nice because he's a consuming fire. And when a consuming fire meets you in the way, it leaves a severe burn. Because even Yahweh Sha'ai said, and his feet like onto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. So that shows you he was in the presence of Yahweh. <laughs> you don't come back the same. <laughs> You gonna leave, the you gonna, the most high gonna leave a signature on you so that everyone will see, oh man, 
he must have been the most high. <laughs> you see what I'm trying to say? Just yeah. like he judged us and he left a signature on us, yeah. all the nations look at us and yeah. they marvel. Yeah. This is the indignation of Yahweh Hashemah Yahweh Shai. That's why they're marveling, man. You know? That's what the Most High does when he visits. Everything gets mash up. So, yeah, uh, what we got? Cunning Hunter, Genesis 25 27. Read that real quick, then we move on. Let's go, let's get it. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 27. Read that. definition for king goes back to spear okay the root word definition is what possession but when you go into the root word etymology definition because you can go into it twice it goes back to spear as well sure, oh, sure. and to the spirit it goes back to possession and it goes back to spear and it says by the sword shall thou live so that means by the sword when you get all your possessions that's what he did. He declared war on the world and took it over. So that shows you that it's Cain, man. That's it right there, man. Right. So also, considering a spear is a weapon of war, it is fair to say Genesis chapter 27, verses 40, pertain upon to Cain. So get Genesis chapter 27, verses 40. It pertaineth unto Cain, who happens to be Esau, and currently, in modern times, it shows us who the Edomites are today, as they will display an array of technologically advanced spear-like missiles. Technologically advanced spear-like missiles. So this is Genesis, chapter 27, verse 40. And by thy sword shalt thou live. And what? And, and by, by thy, thy sword shall thou, thou live, and shall serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the, the, the dominion. Which they have now, right. they've got the dominion. That right. thou shalt break his yoke from ox like you. That thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And that's what they did. They broke the, the yoke from off their neck. Uh, they're free, they're free from our our clutches, man. But we soon gonna get them again at the neck. Dude. Judah gonna start that first. Judah, sure. Judah gonna be at the neck of the enemy, man. Go get right. The Mosai is bringing the panther back to catch the mouse. Because really, if you look at a lot of these Edomites, they got like a mouse face. If you look at them, they, they've got the phenotype of a mouse. And if you look at a lot of the Judites, they got the phenotype of a panther, which goes back to a cat. And it says when the cats are not around, the mice come out to play. So that's what's happening, man. The mice are playing. But soon, Yahweh are going to put the shark back in the mouth of the cats. And the cats going to come and all the mice going to scatter. And if you think up line, look at these Edomites. You're going to see they've got the phenotype of a mouse. You see like they got that mouse face. You know, like a <laughs> mouse, yeah. You know? So it's all spiritual. So we, see, we see what the most is doing, man. Yeah. So yeah, uh... The nations with the biggest nuclear missile programs will uncover the descendants of Esau slash Cain. Will uncover who the descendants of Esau slash Cain are today. Also, considering Cain killed his own brother, it is fair to say he returned back as Esau with similar intentions for Yahweh, Jacob. Genesis 27 verse 41. Yeah, man, because Cain slew Abel, right? Uh, and he came with the same energy as Esau, because uh, he's the same guy. Truth. Hey, a lion will never chew grass, you know. <laughs> he's always going to want that game. That's how Esau is, man. He always wants blood. Man. Oh. Always. Don't be fooled by his smirking. He wants blood. He just can't help you. He's, 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 That's his nature. He's evil by nature. That's the nature. <laughs> That's how the most I made most I made him like that. You can't, you know, be expecting anything different. You know, he 
you're expecting love from an Edomite. That's a delusion, isn't it? You want some love. You gonna get you gonna get love. You gonna you gonna kill your ass. Well love, love spell backward is evil, isn't it? And now Esau has more technology, more weapons to hurt you. Back then he only had a spear, bow, arrow, and a sword. But now the boss side is giving him more equipment. That's why you need to be on this side, man, because when it goes down, you're going to be in a pitiful case. So yeah, read that, Malaka. Let's get it. Genesis chapter 27, verse 41. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing where his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. There you go. Then will I slay my brother Jacob, man. See that? Just like King Abel. Um, right, let's move on. Uh, now, this further proves that Cain is in fact Esau reborn. This further sheds light on the Edomites, Yahweh Sha'ai rebuked. So get John 8 44 because there's another false doctrine going around saying that when Yahweh Sha'ai said, Ye are of your father the devil, he was talking to wicked Israelites. La aha, la aha, la aha. Yahweh Sha'ai never called the Israelites devils, bro. And how can you call a fellow Israelite? and say you are of your father the devil our father is not yeah, devil. No, they, they used to say that the way some of the guys were acting they were moving under that that spirit of Satan. that's why you say that that like your father roughly paraphrasing but actually no but hang on when he said ye are of your father the devil he didn't stop there you know he further on went to say he was a murderer from the beginning ah. he was who murdered at the beginning it was cain so he was talking to the descendants of Cain, man, because there's a history that has been taken out from the Bible. Onias here yeah, and his crew went and made a covenant with the heathens. Maccabees actually talks about that. Right, right, right. So where's the confusion, man? So the Levites, okay, who are honey badgers, went and made a pact with the Amalekites who are serpents. Because what? The honey badger can resist the venom of the serpent. So they merged in. That's why the Amalekites say they're from the tribe of Levi. Because the Levites married into the families of the Amalekites, man. Yeah, because how would they be able to know all of these story, I mean history, understanding of the Bible to a certain extent, if it wasn't? Yeah, because the Levi was in there showing them, man. Because remember, the book is for the Levi, isn't it? Because the law is the Levi. They, they covenanted with them. Yeah. What does it mean to covenant with someone? I take your daughter, you take mine. That's how the Herodian yeah, dynasty yeah, yeah. came about, man. That's what it was. That's why Yahweh gave the parable of the wheat and the tares. That's right. Yeah. Because he could see that, yo, these Edomites are married Israelites, man. He could see that. That's why he cursed them out and said, Ye are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. He's talking about who was a murderer from the beginning? Cain. That's right. And Cain is who? Esau. Oh, that's powerful because Herod's actually one of the Herod, Herod. I mean, in the, in the dynasty, there's an Herod that married an Israelite. And those children came out just like the mystery, so called mystery. But they were Edomite. So these one, they got into the Levitical priesthood as well. Yep. Acting like the priest in that. Yeah, that's why you have those guys in the state of Israel claiming to be, you know, the Israelites. <laughs> that's what they, and this was 2,000 years ago, man. 2,000 years ago, they thought they were Israelites. So what can you tell them now? So they actually truly believe they're Israelites. And that also goes back to why Yahweh Shai say, I know the blasphemy of them who say they are Jews and are not. Right, right, right. But right, right, the yeah, synagogue yeah. of Satan. Satan, right. That's not talking about our people, man. Yeah, yeah. Come me, on. I'm not going to lie. I, I used to think that as well at some point. Yeah, but, but the, then, new the new wine brings clarity, man. Bring, 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 bring clarity. Right, so get John 8, 44, man. Let's bring some clarity on that. This is John chapter 8, verse 44. You are off. Ye are of your father, the devil, right? And the lust of your father, ye will do. Okay. He 
He was a murderer from the beginning. He was a what? He was, he was a, a murderer, murderer from, from the, the beginning. beginning. He was a what? He, he was, was a murderer, murderer from, from the beginning. beginning. Now, brothers, the question you gotta ask yourself is, what is the very beginning of the Bible? Genesis, Genesis. Genesis. And the first slaughter of man was by who? Cain. Cain. So who was the murderer from the beginning? It wasn't Satan. It was Cain. Obviously, Cain is the physical counterpart of Satan manifesting. So basically, Esau is the physical manifestation of Satan. So if you want to see Satan in, as a human being, it's, it's Esau. Right? That's why he said, ye are of your father the devil. See that? Because they are the children of darkness, we are the children of light. The most high created good and evil. The Edomites are here to represent all the evil of the world. You know? taking the innocence of little children you know trying to turn them to be abominable that's what they represent man and that's what satan represents as well trying to take away the purity of the world trying to destroy that's why it says that the enemy has come to kill steal and destroy that's his task he's meant to come and destroy and devastate but we are the children of light we're meant to come and outshadow that with the righteousness of Yahweh Hashem and Yahweh Shai. That's right. Right? And some people say, oh, but why did he create evil? That is foolishness, man. There has to be a balance, bro. Night and day. You go night why did day. He, why did he create darkness? Yeah. Without darkness, the light will not be exalted. Uh, so darkness actually makes light look good. Right. The evil will make the righteousness that much more splendorous. Okay? Without the evil, we can't appreci appreciate the good. So don't ask stupid human-like questions. Because a lot of times people ask those questions because they're in the flesh. Because you're thinking like a man. The, the creator doesn't have the brain that you have. Okay? So if you're trying to use the logic of a, a man that shits and pisses himself every day, you're not going to get it. So, uh, so John 8, 44, ye out your father the devil. Yahweh Sha'ai refers to the Edomites amongst the scribes and the Pharisees as being descendant from Cain. First murderer. Okay. In the scripture. Also, this explains how the Edomites managed to weasel their way into the culture through certain Levitical sellouts. First, because obviously you got some, not all the Levites are good, by the way. Some of them are demons. Oh, yeah, definitely. Man. So, first Maccabees chapter 1, verse 11. Get that. Khan. First Maccabees. Verse 11. In those days, when they are of Israel, wicked men, he persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. See that? Uh, Come and let us go and make a covenant with the heathen. You know, that's how, you know, some, a lot of people, I mean, you know, the Levi got to covenant, into covenant with the Malachi. That's why today, these are Malachi, when they ask them, they will say, oh, you know, you got the rabbi, the rabbi. They know so much. How did they know so much? I, I'll give you one example. The blue letter Bible that we're using, the Amalekai as the one who say, oh, and the accurate for the most part. Only when they want to come up with their, you know, their agenda, as far as the land, they were talking about Palestine being somewhere else and that, other than Africa. But apart from that, the Lashwana, Kwadasha, all the understanding, all the understanding is on point. Why are they getting all this knowledge? Or where, I would say, do they get all this knowledge from? They get it from the fact that they were in alliance 
with the Levi, man. Okay, because the Levi are the ones that understand this, the, the law. They're the ones that are the law givers. That's why they're lawyers, they were judges and that. So they're the ones that will show these heathen how it's done and we are our is, man. So that's how we got to the point where you got these the Rogan dynasty, uh, dynasty guys, you know, I mean, the modern dynasty claiming to be from the, the Levitical Christians. Why? Because the mother were Levi for the most part and the father were Edomite. All right, so that's, that's, that's what that precept is talking about. And vice right. versa as well. Right, vice Either versa. Either my father's right, right. Israelite mother. They will be like the, yeah. the, the, the bastards. I think they work, they work hand in hand, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so first Maccabees 111. Not to talk of Onias going to Ptolemaeus. We keep talking. Why ain't no one talking about Onias going to Ptolemaeus? This is recorded history, you know. You know why? Because you're going to expose a lot of things. So they're going to do that on the low. They came real, man. They came real. Right, not to talk of Onias going to Ptolemaeus to ask for permission to build a replica temple of Solomon in Egypt, which later became the state of Israel, man. Okay, because that piece of land they call the state of Israel is actually part of Egypt. The same, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's a fact. Right. I'm sure that anyways. Which later became the state of Israel. Hence, Yahweh Sha'ai rebuking in Revelations chapter 2 verse 9. So get Revelations chapter 2 verse 9, man. Because Yahweh Sha'ai said, mm, these guys are guys are not Israelites at all. They're not from the bloodline. That's pretty much what he said. He said they're not yeah, yeah, from yeah, the bloodline. The, 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 the wheat and the tears, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what he's talking about. That's the San, the, 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 the Amalekite Sanhedrin guys, man. You know? This is Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know that, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. There you go. But now get Revelations 3 and 9. But are what? But are not. And are not. But are the what? But are the synagogue of Satan. So like yeah. But are the synagogue of Satan. So the synagogue of Satan. That goes back to you. King. Okay. Well, well, that, and the well, main well, tribe. Well, the main tribe of the Edomites, okay, that have infiltrated the Levitical priesthood are the Amalekites. Amaleki. And we're going to prove that, man. The Amalekites go back to a grandson of Esau called Timon. The uh, Timonites. Yeah. The wise men of Edom. Uh, <laughs> That's why they're able to change shit around, man. They did it so meticulously as well. You know? Because even the way they've done the state of Israel, they meticulously made it look like that's the place. They got a Jordan there. They got a Bethlehem, Jericho. They took their time, you know. Yo, these guys, they covered their tracks. 2,000 years of changing shit up. So now, when we tell you the land of Israel is in Africa, you're like, huh? That shows you they've done a great job, man. And also, they're engineers, isn't it? A lot of them, the Timonites. They're, they're wise men, like Elon Musk is a Timonite. You know, they got that brain. They like to structure things. They don't think the same way you and I do. Yeah, you know, the same thought pattern. Every time they look at a place, they're thinking about structure. They're thinking, where do the pipes go? Where is the electricity? You know, where's the carbon dioxide? They, they think about elements all the time. Everywhere you look, carbon That's what I'm saying, you see, Timonite. That could be a Timonite. You know, they got the they got the That's brain. The they got the brain of an engine. They they, they wanna basically their brain works like a like the term thing. Like yeah, a machine. Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. <laughs> like a machine. That's oh, how they that's, that's why they build the engines, the the best engines in the world. The Timonites, they build that shit. You know? They're all about structure and engineering. And they're very good at social engineering as well. Yeah! Very good at them in Germany, yeah. And most of them are from Germany, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's why, they tried, the, the that's why they tried to take over the world because they were like, we got the best weapons, yeah, so yeah. we might as well, isn't it? <laughs> you know? But the Most High shut that shit down. And the only thing that stopped the Germans was the Most High Yahweh uh, using uh, the climate of Russia. 
because they tried to because they were winning the war against the Russians, you know. The only thing that favored the Russians was the cold. It got so cold all the Germans died, man. Couldn't take it. So the weather actually won the war for the Russians. <laughs> and that's the most high. He yeah, controls the weather. The Lord, yeah. He froze them to death, man. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, true. they had better weaponry. Everything they had was better than the Russians. But the, the only thing the Russians had was the weather. weather. It was too cold for the Germans. They froze to death. You know, and that's spiritual, man. Yeah. The most high shut them down. He shut them down, man. And now he's packed all of them in South Africa. He's just keeping them there so that the real lion will come and meet them. Because it's funny, every time they make a movie about Lion King, they always show it in South Africa. Yeah, yeah. That's spiritual, man. That's so spiritual. Because Yahweh Sha'ai going to come so from the spiritual. east and he going to go to South Africa. He going to blast them and he going to stand on the mountain and say, I'm the lion. Wow. And he's going to roar like a lion as well. Wow. That's right. You know? And that's what they did with Simba, it? When he stood on top of the, um, right, 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 right. the mountain pride, didn't it? Yeah. The lion pride. And he declares himself yeah. the king of the jungle. That's the Awashai right there, man. That's what I'm trying to say, man. So, hey. Oh, man. So, we got that? Yeah, you got that, right? Have yeah. you got the uh, Revelations 3 and 9? Yeah, so, read Revelations 3 and 9 and then we'll carry on, man. Revelations chapter 3, verse 9. Ah. Who is Esau Edom? The Edomites. Right. The red right. people. This is Revelations hey. chapter 3, verse 9. Behold, I will, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. Right, so that, pre so that precept right there says that the Sanhedrin guys were saying they were Jews, but they were not. Uh, That's uh, it right there, man. So yeah, uh, so that shows you that in the Elshai's time, a lot of the scribes and the Pharisees were Edomites. That's why he was saying it. Because John 8, 44 is the precept to link to the Revelations. Right, so let's carry on now. It says, this is a clear indication of how the Levitical order became overran with Edomites. Hence the confusion of the originality of locations and the nations of antiquity that dwelt there. Now that we have established Cain as being Esau, we can also say that Cain uh, can be the Lord's literal Cain to beat Jake for going off because when you, when you hear the word Cain, it goes back to Cain. You know the Cain that he used to be? Because in West Africa, you go off, you go and get beaten with the Cain. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah, and, and in the Caribbean, they call him the sugar Cain. You know? Now, I'm talking about the proper king. Oh, like no, a, I don't know what tree they get from, but it's very thin, isn't it? Yeah, but it's very painful. It's a cane. It's like a, I think it's a bamboo tree. Um, yeah, that cane was painful, man. Beat your ass, man, with the cane. Yeah, lose wells and hearts. Yeah, that shit is serious. Man. Yeah, man, they're going to cane you, man. Get your mind right. Man. And a lot of these guys, that's what they need, you know. They need a cane. They need a cane, bro. It's, it's going to be helpful in the end. So it says, uh, literal Cain to beat Jake for going off, just as demonstrated. Isaiah 10 and 5, always Syrian. Yeah, man, that's the preset right there, man. So Cain slash Esau reincarnated is Yahweh has Cain. That's right. He's the Cain, man. Most High's Cain to beat the earth. Oh, Yahweh has Cain. Oh, quick person. Whoop your ass. And that's what Esau's doing. He's whooping your ass. He's got you crammed up in the flats. That's whooping your wow. ass. Wow. Yeah. That's in hell. And look at how he builds the houses the same. Cram, cram. What do you think he's doing? He's basically using his engineering brain to cram. Because that's what they do with the car. Everything is crammed. The engine, you know, you got the exhaust. You got the carburetor. His his mind works like a machine. Right. That's why he builds the cities like it's a machine. Look, this is this is this is not Asian. When you look at it, it looks structured. Right. The shops are always in the same place in the center. Right. Then you have the flats over there. Then you have the terrace. You know, it, it, it's like a teaming vibration here, man. Right? And then you got the red bricks, which go back to Edom. Edom is red. Because you see the red bricks all the time, isn't it? 
roads are very small. Then you got the underground right. system because he's a serpent. He goes underground. This is the Edomite vibe right here, man. That's why I said you know him by nature. You know him by nature. Yeah, man. So where we at? Where we at? Isaiah 10 and 5, man. Preset. Isaiah 10 and 5. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 10, verse 5. Right. Oh, Assyrian. Oh, what? Oh, oh Assyrian. Assyrian. Right. So back then, the Assyrians were the most high's king. But now, Esau is the most high's king. And Esau goes back to Cain. So Cain is the most high's king. True. Oh, Assyrian, carry on. Oh, Assyrian, the rod of my anger. The rod of what? The rod, the rod of, of my anger. anger. And the staff in their hand. No, the staff in thy, not there. Snap here. And the staff in their hand is my indignation. Oh, does it say there? Yeah. Oh, okay. So the staff in the Assyrian's hand. Oh, yeah, Kansalaka. Is my indignation. Oh, see there? How rough. So that's the cane, right? Because the staff is like a cane as well, isn't it? That's right. To, to smack someone. Right. Like we were saying, the Lamada. Lamada. Kobogo. Gold. So that goes back to the cane, man. So cane is Yahweh has cane. Alright? And that's how we go and do this, man. Right, so, uh, yeah, Isaiah. So Esau is basically the Lord's cane of the earth. A closer look at some of the sons of Esau can give a more detailed analysis of who the Edomites are today. As the spirit of the said individual tribe of Esau will be evident in their action. The outward appearance can trick the eyes, but the spirit within the body cannot be altered as they are known by behavior and the fruits they bear. So like I said, a Temanite can look Asian. But the way he will behave, the kind of things he will do to show us he's a teamer. Or even an Edomite. That's why you can't go off based off of the looks. Oh, he's a Hamite. Oh, he's this. No. What is he doing? Spirit bear witness. The spirit will show you what nation that person is, man. Because the same way a bird doesn't get shown how to make a nest or how to fly, it just naturally flies and it builds the nest. It's the same way they've been programmed to do certain things, man. How do you think we're able to know who the tribes are? Because the tribes are programmed to do certain things. You know? Yeah, like the tribe of Naphtali, we know they're gonna run past everybody. So when we see a guy blowing down the street, running, we say, oh, that's a Naphtali right there. You know, that's how you know the tribes, man. It's the same way, you know, that's why Yahweh Shai said, by their fruits, you shall know what tree he is. Whether he's Edomite tree, whether he's an Israelite tree, whether he's that tree or that tree. Watch what kind of fruit he is bearing, man. Okay. So this thing ain't hard. The, the hardest part is to be spiritual. Because <laughs> without being spiritual, you can't tell. And a lot of guys are not spiritual. That's why they can't tell. Right, so get Matthew chapter 7 verse 20. That's the precept for that, man. You know, because this is not really as hard as they're making it out to be. They're like, oh, but prophet, how can you know? It says the spirit beareth witness, man. You know? So this is Matthew chapter 7 verse 20. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. There you go. By their fruits you shall know them they are so all you gotta do is just watch what they do man you know and then you'll be able to tell that's an Edomite <laughs> you know what I mean there's subtle sure. in it yeah like the guy that came to sit there subtility yeah subtility like he doesn't know nothing that's an Edomite yeah. no one ain't gonna tell me that he's an Edomite you already you know. know right so That guy crept in on the ways, so we know that's Esau, man. Because we, I've been coming here for a while, and I've never seen that. Never happen. seen yeah, you don't see no one. See that? But through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem and Yahweh Shai, He's showing us, man. 
has to confirm things. Yeah, he has to confirm. You know? Right, so it says the first son of Esau we will examine is Eliphaz. Allah Yapataza. That's right. Allah Yapataza. So Eliphaz, Allah Yapataza. Okay. So Eliphaz, also in Lashabana Kodasha, Allah Yapataza. Okay, he was one of the sons of Esau that we're going to be looking at. He's a very interesting individual because he's actually on the continent of Africa and his descendants, okay, are the, are, are the who's who's of society today. So get Eliphaz, E L I P H A Z. Let me get that board, man. I might do a quick demonstration here. Just yeah, that. No. So Allah Yapataza. Allah Yapataza. Eliphaz, man. So Eliphaz means what? My God is gold, isn't it? <laughs> Eliphaz, Allah, your partisan. Yeah, my God is gold. Ah, la. See, Dink wants to rule over the Eden, but they don't even know they don't even know who Eliphaz is. You know? He say, oh yeah, we go. You you you, you, you so-called white people are going in slavery. Yeah, but what tribe is he from? Who is he? What is, what what judgment will pertain to him? <laughs> you gotta get technical sometimes, man. No, but you the most I deals with order. Well like that's what when you fill up a form that took up the work. African, are you Caribbean? Your date of birth, your name. They ask you certain questions that before you start the word, they know something about you. You want to rule over the people, you don't know nothing about them. It doesn't make sense. You know, just God don't gold, make man. sense, man. His God is gold. It's all about See? money. Man. It's all about. <laughs> <laughs> it right, hey, that's it, man. How are you going? Alaya Pataza. Yeah, yeah. yeah, man, get Alaya Pataza, man. So, yeah, Alaya Pataza. Alaya Pataza, Eliphaz, that's how they say in English, but that's one of the that Yeah. The definition is what? My God is gold. That's right. Meaning he's, a, he's all about the money. He's all about the gold. Money, money, money. We're not even talking about the RFI notes. We're talking about the real money, 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 gold. Gold. That's man. real money. That's money. Gold is real. And it's funny because through the spirit. Okay, the land of Ophir is in southern oh. Africa, and that's where he is. Yeah. So that makes sense because he don't go where the gold is, isn't it? Well, of course, he don't go. There. I'll make a man more precious than fine gold, yeah. more precious than the golden wedge of what of Ophir. Oh. So he's in the land of Ophir, yeah. man. Hey, gold man, gold man sack, gold man sack. What do you feel? What do you feel? They go to gold. That's gonna come this place. And you know, I watched a documentary. <laughs> these, these are the people, you know. I watched a documentary about all the gold that they have in the gold man sites. And guess what country I saw? South Africa. South Africa. I saw it on the thing. Yeah, South Africa. Africa. Yeah. So oh, these, so in plain sight, that's what they're doing. You see that? So yeah, that's it. So yeah, so read Eliphaz. What's the definition for Eliphaz? Eliphaz. Eliphaz, Eliphaz. So yeah, buddy, how are you can get uh yeah, 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 yeah. So the other biblical usage for Eliphaz is my my God is fine gold. My God is what? My God is fine my gold. gold. My God is fine <laughs> gold. <laughs> gold. Oh, and which gold is fine? Oh, get a piece of the man. Fine gold. Uh, over, I think it's Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah 13, and 13 and 12. Get that, man. That's the spirit. Because when you find the fine gold, in offer, man. So that means so that means Eliphaz or his sons are gonna be in offer. That explains why the Temanites are in South Africa, man. You know, that's spiritual, bro. They're there. You know, they're there. And, and, and the South African, you got the tribe of Gad there as well. Because that Julius Malema, I believe he's a, he's a Gadite. 
you know? He misses the shaka. He said, Gada, but the shaka is go. Shaka. 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 Hanks. Hanks. Lion. Lion. And then the, the, the Gada look like lions. Yeah. Like, oh. Because the Gadites, basically, the reason why I said the Gadites, they have faces like the faces of lions, is because of the furrows. Because when a lion goes like this, you see the furrows on his head. So when that, that brother, what's the name? Mitch, he's a, he is a Gadai. He's not. He might be. He is a Gadai be, because he's got the fur, he's got the furrows on his head. Man. Yeah, lions, man. You understand? He's the furrows, man. He's the furrows. Verse four, yeah. You know. Uh, and it's yes. funny because the brother Mitch, yeah, he comes here. He's got the furrows on his head, and Ezekiel is where you find the mark. Uh, and he's, the furrows look like marks right, right, right. on the head. So that's spiritual that's as well. Too. Spiritually discerned. That is spiritual, that. man. Because what? Ezekiel, Yahazapallah, you find the mark. The mark yeah, yeah. And that's why Mitch has got the furrows and his head. Right, that's that Ezekiel uh, 9, Ezekiel 9, isn't it? That's yeah, man. The mark. And it says, mark upon the forehead. Mark upon the forehead. And he's got God, the furrows on his God, head, God. man. Come on, man. That's a spiritual. Man. These guys, man, they're not, they're not paying attention. That's why I'm just waiting for... I'm just waiting to just get the biggest flipping kaboko in the room. That's what I'm going to be known for. I'm going to be the guy that's lashing you guys. And I don't care if you don't like me. I don't need you to like me anyway. If you like me, what, what's that going to do for me? Nothing. I don't need no love and I don't need to give you love. All we need to give you is the truth and structure. And a lot of you are only going to take this truth. When we give you a savage beating, that's when you're gonna take this truth. Oh, right. Structure is love, you know. Structure is love. When we were beating in, in West Africa, when we were going to school, it helped me. Me personally, yeah, helped that me. helped me. You know, at that point, I thought like they weren't yeah. loving me. But, 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 but after after a while, like, wow, it was good. that did actually good work because he, he helped me. So that's what they, that's what Jake needs. Jake don't need that fake love. Cause that's what they like. That fake love. Yeah. That two-faced love. You know, you need that. You need that. That, that tough love. That's what you want. I ain't gonna be. I ain't gonna be around brothers hugging brothers up. And I ain't gonna be doing that shit. When I come, I'm coming with the kaboko swinging. That's how I'm gonna be coming. For you. And if you don't like it, yeah, wait. And then, yeah, that's how. That's that's how it's gonna be. Love and we're not giving no love, we're giving structure. That's so when we giving. give love, when you give love to 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 to, to Jake, you become entitled and he speak in your face. So there's no point, man. Tough love, that's the way to go. That's the that, that's, that's that's the only thing they're gonna get. You know, that's the only thing they're gonna get, man. We're just waiting patiently. We're waiting patiently for the acceptable hour of Yahweh HaShem Yahweh Shemai That's right Everyone is gonna get got Everyone that's meant to get got is gonna get got That's, that's how it's gonna be man Cause you guys need to learn respect That's gonna be the first thing you're gonna learn The fear of Yahweh is the first step And if we're meant to be the representatives of Yahweh You gonna get it man That's how it is So yeah uh, where, where you at? I was there for you as well. Yeah, read that. Because remember, Eliphaz goes back to what? My God is fine gold. He didn't just say gold. Fine gold. So he's going to be where the finest gold is. Right? Um, read that. So this is Isaiah chapter 13, verse 12. Another. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. See that? You can't make that up. More precious than fine gold. Read. Even a man than the golden wedge of offer. Did you see that? So the golden wedge of offer is that fine gold. And it says Eliphaz, like his name means fine gold. So Eliphaz is going to be in the land of offer. That's why when you go to South Africa, you have the Germans and the Dutch people there. Those are the Timonites and the Eliphaz's children, man. You know, that's why you got those um, places like Johannesburg. That's the Yiddish way of saying John. You know? So yeah, uh, right. So, Gen um, so Genesis chapter 36 verse 10. His God is gold. These 
could be identified as your so-called international banking families. Uh, I'm going to mention some of them. And majorly, Goldman Sachs. That's right. Examples of these international banking families. Let's get the first one. So the Rockefellers are one of the international banking families. Now, when you hear the term Rockefeller, the first thing that should come to your mind is rock. So the fellas from the rock. Uh, Rockefeller, that's what it means. The fellas, the people from the rocks. So we're going to get a precept on that. So get Job chapter 30 verse 6, man. So we're breaking down the international banking families which go back to Eliphaz, which means my God is fine gold. Because that's what they're all about. The banking, the money, the gold man sacks. So we're showing you who the Edomites are, man. It's, they're not hard to be identified uh, because the most I put the name on them as a mark as well. That's it. The no Job chapter 30, verses 6. Job 30 Job, and 6. Job 30 and 6, and it reads To dwell in the cliff of the valleys, in caves of the earth, and in the rocks. And in the what? And in the oh, rocks. That's the Rockefellers right there. That's right. Okay. Rockefeller. That's right. To dwell in the caves of the rocks, man. So that shows you that's Esau. They were driven forth from among men. There you go. So that's the precept for the rock fellas. So now we're going to talk about the Roth, the Rothschild, Rothschild. So get Romans chapter nine verse twenty-two. We're going to break down who the Rothschild are, man. So it says Rothschild can be deciphered through the spirit. And power of Yahweh Haba Shema Yahweh Sha'ai as being the Roth child. Roth. Uh, Basically Roth. But we're breaking it down as Roth. Roth child. Or the children to bear the wrath of Yahweh Haba. Uh, wow. Romans 9.22. Yeah. This is Romans. Because when, when someone says I am Roth, it means I'm angry. Yes. Yeah. So that goes, so that anger goes back to the wrath of Yahweh. So the most I put the name on them as a sign to say these are the Edomites that are going to bear my wrath. So you are going to be called wrath child. Can't make this up. Read it. Romans 9.22. Vessels fit to bear the indignation of Yahweh Haba Hashem This is Romans chapter 9 verse 22. What if Yahweh are willing to shoot his wrath and yeah, to make that wrath? And to make his power known, endured with much long suffering. You see that? He's enduring them. He's putting up with them, man. You know what I mean? The vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. The vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. See that? <laughs> there you go, man. That's spiritual, man. You know? <laughs> So that's 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 uh, so we've got the Rockefellers, we've got the Rothschilds, okay. It says the Rothschild can be de deciphered through the spirit as wrath children to bear the wrath of Yahweh. Now we're going to look at the Oppenheimers. So Oppenheimer, there yeah, is South, South, South Africa. <laughs> Op yeah, Oppenheimer. So o Oppenheimer, which goes back to Timon, a son of Eliphaz. Okay, so get Timon, T E M A N. Because Eliphaz had a son called Timon, man. That's where all your Elon Musk is and Einstein and all these guys. That's where they come from. So Elon Musk, Elon Musk is a Timonite. That's where he is. And he's from South Africa. So that shows you the Timonites, uh, the Edomites are in Africa, man. And they're in the fatness of the, of the earth. So the fatness. South Africa is the fatness because South Africa has the women with the fattest asses. And that's spiritually coded, man. The, South, the, the women from South Africa, they... Yeah, they, they have the biggest asses in the world. Uh, all, no women in the world have bodies like South African women. So that's the fatness of the earth. All the daughters are shallow. Yeah, the yeah, daughters are shallow. shallow. Yeah, no one has bodies like that. They're built like that. Oh, well, like Zimbabwe. Yeah, all the way down yeah. there. Botswana. Yeah, yeah. The daughters, yeah, those people. 
today. That's the fatness of the earth right here. And also, South Africa is beautiful, man. It don't look like West Africa. It's beautiful. It's nice. That's the fatness of the earth. No, it's not. Yeah, so teaming, T N A N. Let's get that. So teaming, and even teaming, because we looked at Edom, and it says Edom dwells south, right? So now let's see what teaming says as well. Let's get the teaming. Let's get the teaming, teaming, get the teaming. Go to teaming, man. Teaming, teaming, teaming. Let's get the teaming. So the Oppenheimers, which go back to teaming, a son of Eliphaz. This family goes back to Germany, which by definition can be transliterated as the germ people because German just means the German, the germ people, the people with the germs, the parasites, parasitical people, man. Simple, isn't it? Right. So the germ people, or better yet, worms, as the name Oppenheimer goes back to worms. <laughs> you know the name oh, yeah, Oppenheimer? Go back to worms. Yeah. Oppenheimer goes back to worms, a very parasitic people. And I'm gonna show you that. Let me let me show you that. That's it. That's it. Team, man. I'm gonna show you, man. I'm gonna show you that uh, Oppenheimer goes back to worms, isn't it? That's a team in here. So it means team in means south. It means south. Well, there you go. So you gotta put it in the video. So team in means what? South. south. And also one of the biblical definition: the wise men of Eden, the wisest. Is that? And it said south, so that means they're going to be in South Africa, bro. The most southern part of the world. Oh, it said, the, uh, a B say the tribe descended from one note for the wisdom of its people. See that? Elon Musk. They said Elon Musk is the wisest man of our time. That's what they're saying. And yeah, yeah, Elon yeah. Musk is where? He's from South Africa. South Africa. Come on, man. So what's this that I'm hearing about brothers saying, oh, there's no Edomites in Africa? You know, uh, you know, man, and South Come on, Africa man. full of them, man. They call it, they even calling themselves uh, Africans now. Yeah, Africans. <laughs> Africans. So yeah. Opp Oppenheimer, let me see if I can find you Oppenheimer. So Oppenheimer goes uh, back to worms, man. Worms. Yeah. Germs. Oppenheimer. Germans. The germ, the germ people, man. Yeah, because the Dutch are not in the German because they're from there, they're Germanic. Germanic people, man. The Dutch. That's why the Dutch. So, so Oppenheimer meaning, it says German and Jewish, right? It says uh, habitational name from a place on the Rhine between Meads and Worms. Can you see that? And look, Worms, Germany. Look, look, it says Worms. It says uh, it's a city in the Rhineland, uh, Palatinate, they can't say Palestine, Palatinate, Germany. Situated on the upper Rhine, about 60 kilometers southwest of Frankfurt, it has 82,000 inhabitants. But basically, there's a high yeah, yeah, Jewish yeah. community there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're called the worms. The worms. That's the and the worm right there, goes man. back to Germany, the oh, germs. germs. Because worms are parasites, man. Right. You know. Oh, that's the spirit. For that guy, the Prince. The Prince Philip, that guy that died. The people, the, the, the husband of uh, the late Elizabeth II. Yeah. When I asked him what do you want to come back as? Oh, he said he wants to come back as a virus. <laughs> you see that? He's a German. He's that's the spirit, German. man. You see that? Why would he say that? Yeah, because that's they, the spirit. That's the spirit. spirit. First of all, he's a wicked guy. He said he want to come and kill everyone. Man. But then, through the spirit, he, he's, showing, he's showing us who he is. He's mm. in the arms. So, 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 German, so, so, so T-Men is a son of Eliphaz, okay? And T-Men will be living in Southern Africa, man. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and we gonna break that down. Man. Yeah, it means south. So where are they? They're in South Africa, man. Huh. So yeah, uh, it says Timon also means south, and this can be linked to the southern part of Africa, which happens to have the women with the fattest asses, man. Whoa. Okay, it's a fact. Everybody knows oh, yeah, that. Yeah. Abnormally shaped. Yeah, that's the first. That's the first thing you notice when you get there. 
all the women are like that. Yeah. And also the prophecy said to Esau, the fatness of the earth. And also the earth is what? Is like a female. Like a female Because you put the seed in, which is male, and then it grows. So the fatness of the earth will be what? The biggest part of the woman's body. Right. Which is the ass. The ass is the biggest part of a woman's body, man. Right there, man. And when you go to South Africa, the women have the biggest asses there. Right. So the fatness of the earth, or the, the, the place on the planet where the women have the biggest asses, that's where you're going to dwell. And that's South Africa. That's why they're there. The fatness of the earth. There you go. So that's the breakdown on that one. Yeah. And also they got the fine gold there. Uh, so why wouldn't they be there? Yeah. You know? Right, so the ship of the woman yeah. remember, tells you about yeah. The quality of the earth. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they put Bible saying, well, they were gonna have the fatness of the earth. The fatness of the earth. That's what yeah. they did, man. And when you go to South Africa, the women's asses are just big, big, yeah. big, 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 big asses. And they don't they don't do no plastic surgery. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's all natural. natural. It's natural, man. That's all the studio, yeah, Sarah Bartman was oh, up there. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You see that? Yeah, we love that. Sarah Bartman, man. Yeah. Show it, show it. Come on, show it. Show it. That's the history of it. They were fascinated by how big the bottles were. Sarah Bartman with these so the fat ass. So in the So you know there's going to be a lot of Reubenites down there, man. Oh, of course. You know? Because Reuben, Reuben yeah, going to be... They're going to regulate. Yeah, Reuben going to be regulating all those fat asses, man. They're going to regulate. And to, be fat fair, asses over there, man. and to be fair, the way the Southern African women's asses are shaped, only a Reubenite can deal with that. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of you guys say, oh, I could deal with that. You can't deal with that, man. <laughs> you can't. You're you fooling gotta, yourself. Yeah, it's true. Only a Reubenite has, you know, yeah. he has that, you know, to be able to. Yeah. Because a lot of the South African women, if you're not from Congo, they don't even want to do it. Because they'll be like, you can't handle me. Because they know, they know you, the rest of you tribes can't handle it. They did the study. But when you tell them you're from Congo, their eyes light up. They're like, oh, okay, that's my guy. And they're all whores anyway, they're sluts. They're sluts. So yeah, uh, yeah man. So South Africa has the women with the fattest horses. You know, that's well known. You can't tell me it's Colombia and yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause you know, brothers in America go and say, oh, you ain't seen the women from Colombia. Listen, you brothers, man, a lot of the women from the Colombia and all that shit, they got plastic surgery. It's not even real. And the ones that are real, they're from the continent. They were just taken there as slaves. We're talking about consistency here, man. And authenticity you know because uh, you know a lot of these women go to Brazil to get the bomb lift so they'll say oh yeah but you know there's women here we... not like in South Africa mate South Africa is everywhere wow. it's normal there isn't it it's normal it's normal man so yeah uh, with the past houses a correlation can be made to Genesis 27 and 39. Get Genesis 27 and 39. So, so yeah, yeah, we're coming to the end of the lesson. Genesis 27 and 39. Get that? Let's speed up. Let's speed up. Yeah, man, those daughters are Shiloh, man. You know, abnormally shaped. Abnormally shaped. Abnormally shaped, man. It's too much. You ain't gonna believe what you're seeing. You're gonna be like, what? Is that real? That's the fatness of the earth, man. We see them on the TikTok doing their dances. Yeah, they be doing their dances. And also, that's through the spirit. That's why the Queen of Sheba came from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know that documentary? It said the Queen of Sheba had a lustful body. Yes. What does that mean? It means she was, she was shaped in a way that when Come you see on, her, you just turn your head. Yeah, you know? That's why they say that King Solomon had a ball. He doesn't mean she didn't. Because if he did, then we, that would be documented. Yeah. She had a lustful body, meaning she had a fat ass. She was a big booty whole queen. <laughs> and she came down to hear some of the wisdom. Yes, that's what she came for. Okay. Genesis chapter 27, verse 39. And Isaac, his father, answered, and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling 
right. shall be the fatness of the earth. Did you hear that? The fatness of the earth, man. And of the dew of the heaven from above. So the fatness of the earth. All right, so we've broken that down, so let's carry on. It says, upon reaching Southern Africa, the first thing you notice is the exceptionally large buttocks of the woman, of the women, which can be synonymous with earth. So the fatness of the earth can be transliterated to be the fat asses of the women in Southern Africa, in the Southern part of Africa. Also, Teman is the wisest tribe of Eden, and Elon Musk, who happens to be a Temanite from Southern Africa, has recently been accredited with being the most genius man of his time. The Edomites in Southern Africa are also predominantly farmers. You know, because the farmers are having problems with the locals, and they, they were trying to get them out. Right, predominantly farmers, which is, which is clearly an indication to them being descendants of Cain, because Cain was a farmer. Right? That's why he came to the, the fruit of the earth. That's why he was a farmer. Who was also a farmer? Also, it is well known that Esau was driven forth to dwell in the caves of Russia, hence becoming the Georgians. Get Hebrews chapter 6, verse 7. A precept linking the Georgians to Cain, the farmer. So we're going to show you how, he, how the term Georgia because when we drove them out of West um, Africa, we drove them into Russia, into the land of Japheth. And they settled in a place in Russia called Georgia. That's where they regrouped. That's where they regrouped and they came back to, you know, they came back again. So we pushed them out. It says they were driven forth from among men to dwell in the caves. Where are the caves? In the land of Japheth. We pushed them and, and the main place they got pushed to was Georgia, the Georgians. That's why when you look up the Georgian flag, it looks just like the England flag, with the red cross in the middle. Exactly, the red, the Georgian flag. So put that in the video. The Georgian flag and the and the British flag. It's similar because these guys they came and they took over man you know which verse which verse hebrews 6 and 7 you want to get dressed dressed but read read the whole precept and then look up the word dressed this is hebrews chapter 6 verse 7 for the earth was drinking in the rain that cometh oft upon it and bringeth forth herbs meat for them by whom it is dressed. By whom it is dressed. So that's talking about like a farm. Yeah. Receive with blessings from Yahweh. Right, so now going to the word dressed, it goes back to Georgia, man. Into Lenia. See that? Hebrews, man. That's how we found out who the Georgians are. You know? Farmers, man. Those are the people that are in Southern Africa. That's why most of them are farmers as well. That's spiritual. It goes back to Cain. And also they're out there in Africa hunting the lion. Uh, right. That's the prime location for him to be himself. He's got the wildlife there. You know, come on man. Is it Georgia? Yeah? Georgia. Yeah, Georgia. You see that? So throw that in the video as well. Oh. Georgia. So yeah. Uh, so Cain the farmer can be linked to the Georgians. So let me let me see this up. So the outline of biblical usage for Georgia is to practice agriculture to, to till the ground you see that to till the ground i've never heard no one bring that out before you know hebrews 6 and 7 you see that to till the ground didn't say came was a till of the ground that's right right also since yahusha is coming from the east it will only make sense that his number one enemies will be in the south as the sun travels from east to south at 12 noon so by 12 noon the sun will be southward so that's how you're able to tell it's a sundial thing isn't it that's how you're able to tell the time on the equator you don't need a watch because when it's 12 o'clock the sun will be on the south side 
Right, so get Amos chapter 8 verse 9. That shows you that Yahweh Shai is going to the south. He's going to tell you. <laughs> because 12 is known as what? New, right? Now see what Amos 8 and 9 says. We're not making this up, you know. Amos 8 and 9, man. Okay. Amos 8 and 9 shows you Yahweh Shai is going southward, man. This is he's going to come from the east, do what he needs to do, and then he's going southward. Because that's where those Tenonites... Eliphaz, the Edomites are, they're dead. They're on the fatness of the earth. So read that. This is Amos chapter 8, verse 9. And it shall come to pass in that day. In that day, that's when Yahushua returns. Read. Save the Lord Jehovah are, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon. Woo, you see that the sun will go down at noon and, and we said the sun rises from the east and then it goes down to the south and noon is what? 12, 12 p.m. and I will darken the earth in the clear day uh, I will darken so that will be a dark day man <laughs> so try to eclipse them that will be a dark day in South Africa it's gonna be a very that's not really Isaiah dark 63 day. yeah no no it's Isaiah 63 but notice he said noon. That means 12, 12, 12 yeah, yeah, p.m. Yeah. You see, you gotta pay attention, you man. Pay. That's the new wine. You gotta pay attention. You gotta go to school with that. Yeah! And That's it's right. funny because it's color. Ezekiel was the reincarnation of um, Barnabas. Barnabas. And Barnabas wrote the book of Hebrews, man. He wrote the book of Hebrews, and Hebrews is where you find the thing about going back to school. Oh, when in the time oh, you want yeah, yeah. to be teachers, yeah, yeah. Hebrew, indeed, I want to teach you again. Hebrews 5 and uh, 11, is it 11 or 12, something like that. So that means that Yahweh is going to send Barnabas back, or Ezekiel back, to come and teach them again. The new one, the new one. But they don't want to learn. So they're going to they, so they receive. Like I said, if you're elect, you're going to get beaten with the Kovoko. If you're not, that's it, man. Or whatever judgment the Mosai has for you, you're going to get it. Ah, so even the elect to the truth. Yeah, they're going yeah, like, yeah, to be chastised, man. Right? Like, the the servants servant that knows his master didn't will. do the will of his father. Hold on, listen, listen. The, the servant who knew but didn't do the will of the Mosai of his father shall, shall be beaten by doing the work, when the most are bringing you order, you have to hearken to it. If you don't hearken to it, you you're going to be beaten. Because that's how the most are. Well, if you read the Deuteronomy, well, I believe it's right though. If you don't work, you hearken. No, no, no. So, it's not. It's not about that. It's about order. Get, no, no, no. If you do the work and you hearken, you're going to be all right. Yeah, no, no, no. About the guys that come up against the new wine, those who come up against the new wine, but these yeah, are left as well. Yes, many like they're men of the law, they do but they're going against that, but they do not understand. Yeah, but the scripture says acceptable men in the furnace of adversity, right? You know, so they're going to be tried, yes, yeah, they're going to be tried, they're going to be tried, they're being stubborn, they have that by the only vibration, yeah, so they're stubborn, so the ones are going to have to. You go, you go you know hurt. I mean? Yeah, a lot, a lot of brothers gonna get checked. They gonna get checked. That's, what it is, man. That's the only way you can restructure a lot of them. They learn by pain, by way of pain. I understand the brother. I understand it, but hey, Yahweh is terrible. That's the point. <laughs> and also, they're being reintroduced to him. They forgot about how he was, and a lot of them didn't grow up in West Africa, so they don't even know how to deal with the Most High. They think the Most High is your buddy, buddy that you can put your hand around his neck. It doesn't work like that, man. You come all bow down with your face towards the earth. Come on, man. Right, so uh, so Amos 8 and 9 shows you you're going to be going 12 o'clock. So Yahweh Shai is going, he's going to be coming from what? The east, which is what? Uh, which is, that six, is that 6 o'clock? The east is uh, 6 a.m. Yeah, yeah, so he's, so he's going to be coming from 6 a.m. And he's going to be going up 6 a.m. Yeah, he's going to be coming at from 6 a.m. And he's going to be going to 12 p.m. And, that, and, and so in 12, in 12, p, 12, it's 12 p.m., yeah? 12 p.m., 12 p. 12 p. Yeah. The, 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 the sun will be darkened. That means it's going to be something that will happen, man. Yeah. Dark ones, but that, it'll be dark. Yeah, it means and, also, and also, he when said when noon. When the sun should be at its peak. Yeah, yeah. So when the sun should be at its peak. Thank you. So, so noon. 
noonday, and also noonday is 12 p.m. So that's and 12 p.m. on the map is South Africa itself, and Timon is south, and those are the wisest of Timon. And Obadiah talks about the Timonite. You gonna get the Timon that you spoke about. We're gonna have to close out. To get Obadiah chapter one verse 18. Right, that's powerful, man. That's how I believe the apartheid thing happened to the Gadites. Of, of course, apartheid, yeah. And, and also, the troops shall overtake, overtake thee, but he shall British. overcome at the last. And that's that spirit, that bro. What's his name again, that guy? Julius Malema. That's that spirit, right? But even Julius, he goes back to Jude. Jude. Julius Malema. And also, he does the marching thing, and it says, Gad is the truth. The truth. So, why are they doing the marching yeah. thing? Because they're truths, man. That's the, the spirit. That's the spirit of Showing Gad. Us, yeah. Gada. That's the yeah. spirit of yeah. Gada. Yeah. You know? Sure. And it's funny because Gada sounds like to gather. Yeah, gather. Yeah, that's what I say, to gather. To gather. We yeah. shall gather. And that's what they do. They always gather together, ain't it? And they'll be protesting. Yeah. Hey, hey, mama. You know what I mean? They got that spirit of Gada on them. Yeah. And when you look up Gada, it goes back to Megiddo. And Megiddo means a place of crowds. Uh, Isn't a crowd a gathering? Right. Come on, man. It's all in the scripture. Make it all, man. <laughs> this is Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 18. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame. No, no, no. I want the part that talks about the team. The team. Maybe you might have to start. Maybe. I think it's Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 5. Actually, let me finish this, and then we'll finish out with Obadiah. Right, so Amos 9, hence Eliphaz, okay, uh, it says, hence the precept clearly showing this vibration. Also, the land of Ophir is in southern Africa. That's a fact. You might have to put that back in there, because you know some of them probably didn't watch that other video. Empires would be founded. While Europe was in the Middle Ages, Southern Africa was dominated by the Kingdom of Great Zimbabwe. Their kings ruled from a court enclosed by a colossal circular wall, over 25 feet high and 16 feet thick. Ruins are an imitation of Solomon's buildings in Jerusalem. The great woman who built the enclosure could have been none other than the Queen of Sheba. This place, according to Mauk, was biblical Ophir, the city of gold. The story of the Queen of Sheba is first told in the Bible. Laden with precious gifts of gold and gems, this mythical white queen visits King Solomon in Jerusalem. She is said to be a temptress with a lustful body beneath her silken robes. She gives the king everything he desires. Yeah, that mighty man. Yes, bro. Right, so it says, hence the precept clearly showing the vibration. Okay, so Eliphaz will be where the fine gold is at. It looks like it's the gold in it to weed him out. Right, it says, another son of Eliphaz to examine is Omar. Amara. Sorry, sorry, Awamara. Genesis. 11, Omar. So we're going to look at Omar real quick. Awamara. Awamara. Genesis 6 11, yeah? Yeah. 36 and 11. Awamara. Or Omar. Awamara. Because that, that, that's also going to show you who Esau is. Because there's a certain type of Edomites, they do a certain thing that they're known for. So that's going to show us who they are. This is Genesis chapter 36. Verse 11, and the sons of Elithaz were Timon, Omar. Yeah, so look up Omar, go into Omar. Eloquent speaker. Uh. And Omar is also the grandson of Esau. 
You see that? The eloquent speaker. Yeah? He so speaks well. That's why they're very convincing. Yes. You know what I mean? And also, as an eloquent speaker, this can only go back to the auctioneers. You know, you know, back in Savi, the guys who used to say, uh, can I get to <laughs> bro, they, they, can, they can twist that tongue. Bro. That's what I'm trying to say. Right here, five the five the five 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 as an eloquent speaker, this can only go back to the auctioneers during the slaves' lineups and your modern day talk show hosts. Because have you noticed the Edomites, they always go like a talk show. You know, like the Letterman show, like the Ian Morgan, you know. And that's how we know a lot of you niggas have got that faggot spirit on you because all you niggas have now got podcasts. Yeah, just so it's like the game that living. You guys look like some old ass aunties, man. Just sitting on the side yeah. and just gossiping. Gossiping about anything. Bro. That shit is effeminate as hell. Oh that God. podcast shit is off. Man. That's what he's so doing. Like, he's doing it on purpose. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, put, he's putting the that Bible That faggot spirit yeah. everywhere, man. Yeah. You, you know? know, that whole podcast thing, man. That's that's not a Hebrew Israelite. You got brothers that will call you for two hours talking nothing but gossiping instead of talking about. They got, the leaven, the Bible they, got, they got the leaven of the podcast. Oh, <laughs> podcast it's How all, can you speak for five hours? It's all about the podcast now, isn't it? Just talking it's a bunch joke. of garbage. We're, we're, we're giving them infinite knowledge, but yet they want to listen to a podcast. That's why hey, they can talk for an hour, but they ain't going to listen for, for, for a new mind video they of two hours. You ain't going to sit down and study. That's good, man. So, so, so basically, the talk show hosts, the sport commentators, oh. you know, like Martin Tyler and all those guys. Oh, there goes Ronaldo. He's got the ball. He takes it in. Oh, he takes one out. Da -da 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 -da. It's, a, it's a goal! It's a goal! <laughs> That's Esau, oh, man. That's Esau. Hey, ring announcers, Michael Buffer. God, this guy and in the blue corner. This guy got Nick, really this guy Nick cool. Ferrari. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, that was it. Let's get right into it. That's what I'm saying, though. So Esau is showing himself, bro, because when you read the definition, it shows you who he is. That's why we say the Edomites are known by nature. Okay? They're eloquent speakers, man. So, um, <laughs> so check this out. It says, uh, so the ring announces, an example is what Michael Buffer in it. He says, standing in the red car, wearing orange trunks, yes. coming out of Catskill, New York. <laughs> Introducing the heavyweight champion. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They can talk, talk, yeah. They can talk, yeah. Damn it. So also, in a nutshell, the media, which is a powerful tool owned and used by Esau oh, yeah. to promote lies, yeah. misinformation, and blasphemies, man. So get Revelations 13 and 5. Because media is a big thing among the Edomites. They love media, man. Because they use it. It's a power tool. You know, like when you got tools, it's one of their power tools, man. They use for drilling false information into your brain. That's why when we come with this, they're looking at us like, huh? Because he saw us a big hole in their brain. You know? He's left a big hole, man. This is Revelation, chapter 13, right? Verse 5. And then was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. <laughs> A mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. That, so that will be the tribe of Omar, of the Edomites. A power. Because the Edomites are made up of tribes too. So the guys with the biggest mouths, they will be the Omar guys, the announcers, the talk show hosts, you know. A power was given unto him to continue 
40 and two months. Well, there you go. That's why they, they can say lockdown and everybody locks yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're eloquent speakers, very, man. Yeah, yeah. They're that's very the, convincing. That's the they could be lying trying. to your face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the way go. they will say it, you believe that, you think it's different. That's, that's, that's the Omar tribe. That's the Omar tribe right there. The media was set on by a guy from the Omar tribe. Omar tribe, without a shadow of a doubt. What's that guy's name? Is it um, Rudolph something? He owns the BBC. I don't even know him. Oh. What's his name? He has to be from the Omar tribe, bro. Uh, Piers Morgan will be from the Omar tribe. Yeah. That motherfucker. Uh, Letter, is it David Letterman? Yeah, David yeah, Letterman. Yeah, he won't be from the Omar tribe, you know? Even, even, hey, Terry Springer. Yeah, Terry yeah, Springer is yeah. Omar tribe, man. Yeah. Jerry Springer, man. That's what he do. He used to make niggas come with yeah, the fly themselves. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Uh, what's his, what's his name? Uh, Jeremy Carr. Jeremy Cow, there you go, Jeremy Cow. You see that? Yeah, man, what's his name again? Uh, I think they took, they took his name. Yeah. Uh, really. What about Sam, what about Simon Cowell? Is he? Simon, Simon Cowell could be Omar Tribe as well, because he's like a media, media guy. Media guy. All the media people, the top, top ones. Edomites, bro. Jake, you ain't gonna get that high, man. This ain't your kingdom, bro. This is Esau's time to shine. So all your number one media representatives, they're going to be from the Omar tribe. And they can't help themselves. That's the spirit of Most High Covenant. That's why they're relentless. They don't stop. And they'll talk to you like what they're saying is the truth, man. That's what they are <laughs> This bastard child. If you, look, if you look at the music industry, all these guys, have the bastard child. There's one I'm coming with. Those niggas, like, what's his name? Jimmy? Jimmy, Jimmy Savage. No, Jimmy. Ivy. Oh, Jimmy Ivy, yeah. They use, they, they use them as muscle, wasn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go and get, uh, go and get niggas, yeah. niggas, yeah. But the one at the top, that's Esau. Mm. So now let's deal with the hunter. So another son, Kenaz. Get Kenaz. I think he's in the same preset, Kenaz. So Kenaz, which means hunter, sons who the Edomites are today, as no one has killed and captured more lions in Africa than the Edomites, man. You know? in southern africa which is the prime location for esau to fulfill his innermost sinister desires of killing things so kenaz 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 would be one of the sons of Eli, um, i think eliphaz is it eliphaz yeah, the son of esau to go to the yeah kenaz yeah so kenaz so get kenaz as well because kenaz is an edomite yeah. and basically you know all those edomites that like to hunt it's them, man. Kenaz. So Kenaz, outline of biblical usage. Kenaz, a hunter. Hunter. Hunter, there you go. So they're the Edomites that you see like in, you know, like Australia. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, the Aussie guys. They, 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 they fight kangaroos. Yeah. They don't fight kangaroos. I'm like, these guys are saying that. They yeah. love hunting bro they love they shoot pheasants they can't help it they need to something needs to die yeah something needs to be shot something needs to be shot <laughs> something needs to be shot bro yeah. you know that's that's how they are man yeah. they don't want to shoot birds they yeah, they don't want to shoot yeah man, man. the way they do is like, they shoot ducks they shoot foxes yeah. everything they love it they love it right so last but not least Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 5. Now this will further show you who the Edomites are. Because the Most High prophesied about what they did when they came to Africa and they split it up. Because you know, that's the land that the Most High gave us. So get Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 5. This, this didn't happen in the, in the state of Israel, bro. Because there's no resources there. There's nothing there, man. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord Jehovah, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia. And against who? And against all Idumia. So Idumia goes back to Edom. Okay? The Idumians, the Edomites. Which have appointed my land 
into their possession. Right. So the, the Berlin Conference of 1884 was a meeting of European powers and how they were going to carve up Africa. And it basically just came down to how powerful you were at that time. So of course, the United Kingdom pretty much got what they wanted. They did initially advocate for Tanzania and pretty much all the land surrounding Ethiopia. Now they didn't get all of that, but it was all right because they still got a lot of countries along the Ivory Coast and all of Nigeria. Then there's France who for the most part got what they wanted. I mean, initially they were requesting all the way through Sudan and touching the Red Sea. But for the most part, this was like 80% of what they asked. Then there's a country like Portugal who legitimately asked for the entire- How did they appoint the land into their possession? In the 1800s, there was something called the Berlin Conference. That's when they came and they split the land up and they shared it amongst themselves. That didn't happen in the state of Israel. You didn't see the Germans, the Spanish, the Chinese, the Portuguese, the Germans, the British, uh, the French. You didn't see all of them come together to, to split up the land. Okay, so that's, that's that prophecy right there, man. With the joy of all their heart, Despiteful mind, with despiteful mind to, to cast the resources right. to cast it out for a prey. Yeah, Ooh, that's it right there. So, so they sent the bastard children. They sent. They, so basically, they financed the bastard children to come to West Africa and to come and plunder it, man. To drill the resources and bring it back to them. And because the bastard children wanted to be on the level of Esau, they now became middle class because they got some of the money too from coming there to exploit. You know, the, after, the all the mom, after all the mom is Esau and also. There you go. Because Esau is at the top, the bastard children are in the middle, and you niggas are at the bottom. Because they, the, the guys who they sent to West Africa, they're not Edomites, they're bastard children because they can't withstand the climbing and all that. So they have to be, uh, should I say, a watered down version of Jake coming right. back. Right. And, and that's the breakdown that he did. Yeah, that yeah, makes yeah. perfect sense. Right, right. And Jay-Z and them, Jay-Z don't speak to iron hops like that. They don't speak to the bastard children, man. They can't go to Esau and talk like that. No, they deal with the bastard children. You know, that are right in the middle, like yeah. you said. And also, you got to remember, there's not that many Edomites. There's only a handful of them. They're germs. Okay, they're small. I've been this small among the heathen. Now I've been in the spies. They're small at, at the top of the pyramid. Okay? And they get the bastard children to do all their dirty work, and then they give them a little, a little something. A little something. Yeah. That's why when you come to London, you see the bastard children are the middle class right. people. That's why they're trying to get rid of the middle class, yeah. and that's when all hell's going to play. Because the bastard children, they're fucked up in yeah, the exactly. you know? They're a fucked up species wow. of James. They're a wild sea lion. <laughs> all these Irish and Scottish, they gonna lose it. Right, so last but not least, Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 5 was concerning the Berlin Conference. So you've got to put that in. So where's the prophecy concerning the Berlin Conference? The Berlin Conference of 1884 was a meeting of European powers and how they were going to carve up Africa. And it basically just came down to how powerful you were at that time. So, yeah, where's the prophecy? Yeah. You guys ain't done a like breakdown for everything that. Everything that has to do with Africa has no breakdown, man. You guys oh, are man, off man, the man, mark. Man, 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 for showing us this because that's what a lot of these chicks from Africa they didn't really, you know, they didn't they take time to shoot because take like, to. where are we in that? Like, it's like we have my, like, what's going on? You know. So they've condemned a lot of people yeah. that are actually, you know, Israelites. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, that's what the new wine brings. The new wine brings clarity. clarity. Right? Yeah. right. So last but not least, the Edomites split the land up to exploit it. And it's funny because that's how France gets powered. <laughs> by the, France is getting powered by the countries in Africa, bro. You know? He's not getting powered by flipping Palestine and Israel. There's no resources there See to pull. He's getting, the Europeans are getting their strength from Africa, bro. Africa. Fact. Fact. Right, so. Uh, it says they split up the land to exploit it. This never happened in the state of Israel as there's no resources to prey on. So how can Israel be preyed on when there's nothing there to take? How is it being cast out as a prey? There's nothing there. But Africa is being preyed on because what? That's where the land is and is full of resources, oh. man. 
is full of it. Anyway, that's it on that. Um, with that. Oh, you got oh Obadiah. Let him read Obadiah. Yeah, so yeah, Salaka. So read Obadiah and then read about the team. Read about the team tonight all the way down. So this is the final judgment. This is what's gonna happen. Because they've had all their fun, innit? Drilled all the oil, killed all the lions, the zebras, you know, fun financed the, the captivity of the twelve tribes, plundered the earth, packed up all the gold into storehouses. Well done. Now this is the judgment. That's right. This is open. This is open dice. That's not for me. Right. Yeah, just wherever, man. Okay. Just make it make sense. This is Obadiah chapter one verse eight. Shall I not in that day say the Lord even destroy the wise men of Edom? Right. So the wise men of Edom read and understanding out of the mount of Esau. There you go. So understanding. So all that mad shit Elon Musk is doing is gonna come to naught. Yeah. All right. And thy mighty men, O T man. And thy mighty men, O T man. You see that? Shall the Germans. Be, uh, and thy mighty men, O T man, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. There you go. And there shall be. Carry on reading. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob. Mm -hmm. Shame shall cover thee, mm -hmm. and thou shalt be cut off forever. There you go. And that's thou right. shalt be cut off forever. And that's spiritual because Obadiah is what? I father Yahweh. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So he's only, he's only, so he is befitting that I father Yahweh read, read the final precept that's right, that's right. on the new wine breakdown for who? Adawamaya. You know, yeah. and with that, yeah. we're gonna say, Kala halala, Kala halala, Yahawaha, Yahawaha, Bahashama, Bahashama, Yahawashai, Yahawashai, Baraka Ata, Baraka Ata, Manawa, Manawa. Shalom, Shalom.